So okay, so go. this is our bracket. Okay. So here we go. Here I'm gonna go like this. Uh, let, let, let's see here. Uh, okay. So first, first people in the bracket. Right. One, two. Uh, two. Four. There's six. Wait. Uh, six. Don't we have sixteen people? Yeah, yeah, we're probably gonna run out of space, huh? Yeah, well, we have two sides. Yeah, we shouldn't do two sides. We can do one side. No, I mean, like, we turn around and do it over again. Since oh, oh, yeah, good idea. Do over, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that, that should be good. I don't think there's anything bad on there. Okay, uh, so let's see here. Uh, we've got to have. Guys, if it doesn't work on the front, you just move to the back. We right? planned for this. That's why we have two sides. Okay, so. This is good. So we need eight of these. One. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here's, thank you. Well, here's the thing. If it's a big problem, we can stack two boxes on top. Of it. Well, here. Oh wow. This is for whenever we mess just up. That's a good okay, idea. Yeah. This is good. Stack. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. We just stack. Good. So we've got another box here, and so this is if we mess it's up. It's fine. We got it. We got it. Oh. Well, I'll keep the box up. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay. So let's go ahead. We're gonna pick out two names. Uh, we, we decided we weren't really sure exactly how we were going to handle uh, what do you call it? Uh, how we were going to handle who plays who, and we figured that we would go by the most fair strategy: complete fucking randomness. And that way, uh, nobody can complain. Everything is basically fair. And let's go ahead and let's start it up. Okay. Dude, I forgot to put pants on. <laughs> Same. Okay. First one. Ben Rookie. Okay, all right, Ben Rookie. And number two. Versing Ben Rookie is going to be. Who is it? Rukova. Oh, shit. <laughs> Rukova. Okay, Rep Paladin versus Mage. <laughs> We're starting off hard, boys. Okay. <laughs> All right, next. Let's go. All right, next one. Little Payo. Little Payo. Oh, boy. Okay. And let's see if we're going to draw a warrior here. Hunter. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Oh, well. Uh oh. Well. Uh, -oh. <laughs> uh oh. All right. Payo and zero. Next two, uh, next two right here. Okay. Next. Hot form. All righty. And who's hot form going to be playing against? Rigged. Yeah, this is rigged, by the way. Dude, this is the least rigged tournament I've ever been a part of yeah, in my entire life. This is absolutely life. rigged. Okay, just a second. I have to. Okay. If we rigged it, I would have wanted Ven versus Zico as the first matchup. I would have done all mirrors. Healing stat. Hot Wait, form versus healing stat. Okay. Hot form's still playing as Druid, right? I believe so. Druid versus Priest. That's going to be a really interesting matchup. I'm actually really. It's going to get that. damp, boys. It's going to get real <laughs> damp. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. And. Sony, the first warrior. Okay. Okay. Let's see what this is going to be. Mirror match. Warrior versus Mirror warrior. match. Naxa. What? A night elf versus a tauren. We'll see if Leeway is really as strong as the people on Classic WoW subreddit believe it is. Leeway doesn't exist. Don't tell them that. <laughs> they made <Fine>. it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Stay safe. Let's go, baby. All righty. If, and... if, if Snuts is drawn, Asmund's rigging this and his eyes have been open the whole time. True. This is all pre-recorded. People are handing me this. Okay. CGI. <laughs> Paid yeah. actor. Okay. Let's 
see -Doo. Wow. See -Doo. Stay safe versus see -Doo. Dude, that's hype. And he's playing Elemental, I've heard, too. Dude, I heard Ellie slaps. I've got versus wrecked. A, versus a Warlock. I don't know. I mean, that that's going to be... It's gonna be really hard to say. If, if you come out if you have, if you have good sacks, yeah, like, it's huge. Oh man, well I'm excited for that one. I actually don't know how that one plays out. Okay. Next, Dude, El Ellie's gonna be like the gachi spec. Zico, all right, our second baker right here versus. App search. <laughs> so we have two Paladin versus Mage matchups at the beginning here. Okay. <laughs> Zico versus App Surge. All righty. I am actually very curious to see how this is going to play out. Two of the biggest names in, yeah. in PvP, too, right? So it's like, it's definitely a good matchup as far as players are concerned. Let's roll. So I think we. Guys, guys, could for one second, could you guys close your eyes? Uh, me and Asmund need to talk, just me and him for a second. Can you guys just close your eyes for one second? Just close your eyes. Let me know when you guys are, close your eyes and you've stopped listening. How many people were we supposed to have in the tournament? 16. There's 15. <laughs> Did you drop someone's name? I don't think that we drew, I don't think we have, I think we only announced. Asmund, who is, are you kidding me? Do, do any of you guys want to play? Oh, wait, they're not listening. They're not listening right now. <laughs> okay, we're going to figure this out in just a minute, but let's go ahead and we're going to draw the last two people and then whoever we ask. Oh, you guys in. can listen again. You guys can yeah, listen it's again. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Can you open your eyes again? What? Okay, there we go. I'll sing on. All right, great. Do, uh, do we have any toilet paper? No, I have one more. I have one more. I prepared for myself. Shit. Oh, there goes my security deposit. <laughs> okay. All right, good. Uh, I kicked over my drink. <laughs> but so, I will delete the bot. Don't yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, so I actually prepared, uh, you know, I, I've, I've known myself for a long time, and I prepared to just immediately know that anything that I do will probably be fucked up in one way or another. So I already had another sheet of paper. So this is going to be all seeing eye. Um, now you guys know it's not rigged because how would there be a mistake if it was rigged unless we plan the mistake to look fallible i'll see you guys oh you drew him oh yeah, oh. Yeah. oh it's like sauron exactly you yeah. all see you i love oh, that good. anime yeah, that's a good one all righty all right now this is actually this, this does make it a little bit more fair fair okay here we go yeah, it makes it fair there are actually enough players in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, you know, one person just automatically default wins their round. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you even like go of it? I did, I did. I swear to God, I did. Okay, uh, so All Seeing Eye is going to be the first one. Okay. And then I'll shake it up a bit. It has been sufficiently shook. Am I right? Okay. Okay, here we go. Did you just pick up two? <laughs> there, I got this one. Okay. I was uh, in my hand was mostly on that one. Okay. I actually to be to be fair, I literally thought you put other ones back in to fuck with me. No. So I didn't no. think it would matter. No. Okay, rigged. Oh, come on, guys. Give me a break. Is yeah, that was that was rigged. Okay, all right. It was between snuts and jelly beans. Do you have a coin? No, just put it back in and just re-roll. Okay, fuck it. Ready? Jelly beans. That was the one I was going to pick originally. Jelly Fate has chosen. All seeing eye. And who is a warlock, by the way? And uh, Je I'm Jelly's, Jelly's, oh, all seeing eyes. Yeah, all seeing eye yeah. is a warlock. Eye of Kilrog, all seeing eye. And uh, Jelly beans obviously is a hunter. So double pet classes right here. Hunt hunter at 40 slaps. That's right. Like, like I, I actually heard right. that Bean was crushing mages. 
Really? Like I heard that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you, you have okay. so many things that you can do. Like you have mana hate, right? Uh, we'll see. And the fa the final two. Snuts and bean. There it is. So we have double in the in the yes. first round. We have double hunter versus log. Absolutely. Okay. Uh. Well, boys, those are the matchups. Everything has been completely chosen at random. And to be honest, I don't think that we have any of these here that are just ridiculous, right? Like I was hoping that we wouldn't draw a warrior versus mage and we had the only fair thing that a warrior can fight against, which is another warrior. So I'm actually really curious to see what this is gonna be and how this is all gonna set itself up. So anyway, we'll go ahead and put these names back in the hat and then we'll get ready to uh, to start this up. So uh, we should we should uh, maybe have our sideline reporter give us his first take yeah, on, yeah. on what, what, what he thinks of everything that's happened with the bracket, we might actually be able to get down to the battlefield right now and talk right. to Esfan, the, the most the most beautiful, beautiful man here in the entire building. Uh, I'm gonna bring the bracket up so you guys can take a really good look. I'm gonna run the bracket graphic. Do, 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 do. Sponsored by Amazon, by the way. Uh, uh. All right, guys. We're here, we're here in the Caverns of Time. We've got a crazy crowd out here, okay? There's literally hundreds of thousands of people out here. There has not been an event like this. There has not been an event like this since the 1985 Cotton Bowl, okay? So this has been totally insane. We have Horde, we have Alliance coming together to find out who is the greatest duelist, the best World of Warcraft player, in the level 40 classic wild beta that's closed and only a certain amount of people can play, mostly streamers. <clears throat> it's amazing. We got a great show planned. Rich Asman, back to you guys. Oh wow. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Very, you can see nice. uh, all the all the ladies coming out as well, especially after Esfan does. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're going to be checking in with Esvon throughout the entirety Absolutely. of the tournament. He's going to be down right in the, the pit of it, the thick of it, yep. right in the action, watching everything as it does happen. And we're going to be able to actually talk to all the players as well as we get this Absolutely. first matchup started. Guys, if you're just tuning in right now, we just drew out the entirety of the bracket. And we are going to be starting our double elimination tournament, $2,000 in prizing, the first cross-faction tournament on the beta. And the first matchup is going to be Ben Ruki going against Dracova. Now, Dracova, you already heard it from Esfan. This, this is a player that Esfan really is talking up a lot on a class that Esfan also does talk up a lot. Yep, that's very, very true. Uh, Rep Paladins, they have a very, very high, uh, a high reputation to uphold. Uh, not only has Esfan been talking about how viable and great they are for a uh, better part, over a year now. But on top of that, I've actually been losing to them for over 10 years. So I'm actually really, really happy to see it. either one of these. If Finruki wins and the Rep Paladin loses, I'm going to feel good because I vicariously win. And if Dracova wins, that's going to be fucking cool too because a Rep Paladin actually wins. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine that to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I think that there is a saying about rep paladins as well that has happened for almost 15 years auto attack andy uh, auto attack andy and and also there's there, there's some talk about whether or not they're they're going to be able to to come through and at which speed uh they're able to move at and uh by okay well by you guys chill out okay now you guys are dude okay i'm a little bit overweight okay it's not every rep paladin is overweight it this is getting personal it's not about you not everything is about you Okay, like sometimes okay. these classes are just not that good. I, I, it's, it's, that's fine, but we try our best. And your best, best well, is you know the what? standard. We're gonna see it. We're, we're, we're gonna, gonna see we'll, it. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see it. Yep. We're gonna see it. And uh, you know, it's a little bit harder to waddle. It's a little bit harder to roll through when you got frost bolts coming at your face. Right. You got frost novas rooting you in place. You get some of those procs. You see him slowed down, nice and easy. And you got Van Rookie who we've already seen not only win the last duel tournament, which was held by tips. It was the first duel tournament on the beta. It was insane. It, it was so much fun to watch. He, he, Ben Ricky was able to win matchups that were incredibly difficult for him. But then on top of that, there was a duel tournament before that. And that, that was actually on retail. And look who won that is Ben Ricky. Dueling God. Wow. God. 
There it is. Uh, I mean, guys, let me go ahead. Let's do this. Type in chat who you think is going to win. We'll do this for every single match. We'll see who's the favorite by chat. Uh, I think a lot of people are probably going to expect Vinruki to take this one home. But uh, you know what? We could have a few diehard Rep Paladin fans that really think they're going to be able to pull it out. So, uh, me. Pulling it out, definitely a skill that you do want to master. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll have to see whether or not that can come to fruition or or if they're just not going to be quick enough. Definitely playing with fire here when you are up against a mage that has that, that diverse Frost. toolkit. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's basically. Well, well, they use fire actually because it's not fire blast. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really basically. probably. But yeah, so uh, I, probably a lot of people think Ben Rookie's going to win. I think it's absolutely completely possible that Dracovic could come out and uh, actually win here. Now, for some of the general rules for the tournament, we're going to allow people to use pretty much all of their class abilities and Ooh. generally things that their class has access to naturally. So that means their own self buffs and everything that their class can create and do on their own without the usage of any sort of other, you know, external factors. Now, there are going to be a couple of exceptions to that. We are allowing most of the engineering items and trinkets and toys and different things that you can use, as well as bandages up to Mage Weave, because obviously this is a level 40 beta and Mage Weave is intended for, Mage Weave bandages are intended for level 40 characters. We thought that it would be fair to limit it to that to simulate an actual level 40 experience. So that's basically what we're going to be doing for the rules, and uh, that's pretty much it. I want to give a big shout out as well. I, I know we've already talked about the tournament that Tips did put on yeah. a, a month ago. His rule set was rock solid. So we pretty much, I, I pretty much copy pasta his rule set and then we went through and maybe made like a couple of tweaks here and yes. there because it was cross faction yeah so but, huge shout out to tips yeah. i mean it's a great job man and uh you know like we used a lot of the rules that he had created and uh i think that they're great honestly just yeah. saved us a ton of help uh a ton of time and it was a huge help yeah like he, even the way it was worded which was, was just like really good and like so big, big shout out to him i know too he's definitely been helping s with some of the stuff but behind yep. the scenes so a uh, big shout out to him and of course all of the players as well i'm definitely very excited to get this one started and what, what's going on right now we have an elite team we have an elite security team actually headed by mcconnell he's our head of security uh so so don't try any shit, guys don't get any ideas because mcconnell's going to take you down on top of that we all also have an elite team of warlocks which are going to be on call making sure that everybody's getting to the location spread across all of azeroth the entire world is our playing field for this tournament we're getting everybody to the first location right now for the first duel because of the nature of creating the bracket live we, we're going to give the players just a few moments to to get ready get their matchups make sure that they're specced appropriately for the duration of the tournament now that they've seen that bracket they have that full information then we're going to get down to business and we're going to see who's able to take that first matchup ben rookie versus Jacob. and one also thing that i wanted to mention is that we are not allowing respects during the dueling tournament so some people might have to get their spec ready after they see basically who they could potentially play against in the first few rounds. They might need to set that up and get that ready. So we're just going to give them a little bit of time to fully prepare. And then also we're going to give ourselves some time to make sure that we have all of the different frames and in, in like set up so we can see all the different views not only us perspect uh us spectating from a third party but also the first person perspectives of both of the competitors as competitors as well which is obvious why obviously why everybody is streaming yeah it, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those things too where we plan on doing a lot of things like this once classic actually comes out so we're going to figure out what the best way to actually do the tournament is going to be now before we actually get these matches started i also do want to take a minute here to take like an overall pulse of what the meta looks like in your mind. Like what classes do you think are very strong? What do you think some of these matchups are gonna look like? Uh, I think that honestly, we're gonna see mages and hunters and warlocks come out ahead the most. And because we do have one priest in there, I think that could be kind of a wild card. And I really don't know what's gonna happen whenever we have a priest in there. Because obviously Shadow Priests are extremely strong at level 60, but is that going to carry over to level 40? I'm not really sure. But I, in terms of that, I don't really think that we're going to see a lot of Warriors getting up into the semifinals and uh, the actual finals. But I also do think that maybe Rogues could make it up there. It just really kind of depends. There are a lot of these classes that, you know, so much of this is going to be dictated on individual player skill and knowledge of the class and how much of a holistic understanding you have 
of everything that's at your disposal. And I think that's really what's the most interesting thing about this is that for a lot of these people, they haven't even been able to play these classes for over 10 years. So coming back to them and seeing who's been able to grow the fastest and understand the meta of their class and understand the fundamentals in the best way, I think is going to be even more of a strong determining factor than the class that they're playing, which is why I think this is going to be so exciting. Uh, it also looks like Tally may have uh, throw, thrown 1K uh, at the prize point. Hammers up, if that's the case. Shout out to you, Tally. Thank you so much, man, for supporting this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. It means absolutely a lot to us. Uh, th these tournaments and this community tournament that we're putting together here is the essence of Classic WoW. Everybody coming together, content creators, people on the server, uh, us players, I guess, not necessarily uh, amazing players, but us casting it, everybody coming together and actually doing something with the tournament and making something as a community. Did you just call me bad? Did, did you just take that rant to call me bad? Well, it was mostly me. I mean, it was mostly me. I mean, like, like I did duels for like two hours yesterday. I won one of them. That's fine. It's fine. There's a reason I'm, we're talking. There's a reason we're talking. Yeah, I only won one. Like, it's really bad. I had seven health whenever I won. I almost lost. I remember it. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it was. I remember the one time I won. Well, well th 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 thanks again uh, to Tally. Thank, right. thank you very much. Absolutely. Three thousand dollar tournament now. Uh, Three thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it, actually that's pretty awesome, right? Uh, yep. And I, I think we have plans to to keep growing everything that we are going to do. This is the first of many. Uh, the fact is that we uh, we put all of this together in not really that much time at all and i think we've done an absolutely amazing job so shout out obviously to rich and our producer well executive producer s fund in the other room that's made all of this possible so guys this is not the first this is the first of many yeah. and uh if this goes well we're going to keep doing these regularly uh obviously we might even do like tournaments on bfa and yeah. like rbg's tournaments like we the sky is the limit right if, if this goes well and it is going well we want to continue doing this in every single different way possible. And, and uh, we, I, we yeah. enjoy this. We're passionate about this. And I think uh, I think we can all say that we're we're glad that our first time is with all of you as well. Absolutely, De definitely excited for for this tournament. And now I, I do want to actually talk about that meta just a little okay. bit more. So obviously, I, I think one of the things that's really exciting about this is the fact that we really won't see many tournaments like this. We won't see many tournaments at forty. Tips is doing his tournament on July seventh, so that's. Uh, that's what, like four days from now, something like that. So we're going to yeah. see basically the same meta play out twice. And then the beta is going to, to explode. Uh, the apocalypse is going to happen. Everything's going to be wiped. All of that's going, going to be done. And most likely we won't really see another 40 dual tournament. I, I mean, even if we saw something close to this meta, it would probably be in the area of like 39. 39. Yeah, 39. Be, twinking, which would be very different because those players don't have access to the, uh, the capstone talents. Yes. So this is going to be a one of a kind experience. We're never going to see another dueling tournament like this. And that's why I'm really kind of curious to know what the meta is. Is it going to be more like 30 or more like 60? I personally think that it's going to be more like 60 because people do have access to those capstone talents, Mortal Strike, etc. Uh, all of those different things. So I'm very, very curious to see what's going to really happen. So I, I've said this before. I think I said it maybe on All Craft even. Okay. I, I know we've talked about it. I thought that the 30 meta was really interesting because we saw a bunch of different specs that came out. Like hybrids. There, yeah, there were a lot. Yeah. Uh, you can make some flexible decisions. You know, you look at druids, there's obviously some stuff that you want to hit. Like you want to be able to have nature's grasp in a duel. Or, or yep. sorry, you want to be able to have uh, swiftness in a duel uh, so you can actually pop off those big heals. Mm -hmm then you could pick points in other areas. When you look at capstone abilities and how strong they are for most of these classes, do you think that everybody's just going to hit their capstone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like there's almost never going to be a situation where having your capstone talent is, is less important than having a lot of points in another tree. That being said, it could completely happen. And I think if it does, that's going to be awesome because it's something that's completely out of left field and it's going to be exciting to see. So I really hope that we see that happen. Yeah. And like the, the main thing is, is are we going to quickly see one thing pull ahead? Are mages going to be super strong? Are they going to be even more strong than we saw in the previous? Well, who do you think is going to win? Or not who, but what class? Uh, what classes yeah. do you think are going to be strong? I think Hunter might be a big surprise. I actually think Hunter might be a really big surprise. I, I think okay. a, a lot of people that, that have big vanilla brains Absolutely. often talk about how strong hunters are at the very beginning at Classic. Yeah. Be because of how their damage is actually done. 
And I, a, a, lot, a lot of people are, yeah, yeah, five heads. We have a bunch of five heads in the chat. It, it's actually true. Hunters could be really good right now. And also what they're going to be able to do a lot of against a lot of casters, which is going to be dominant in the bracket. Oh, absolutely. Like that's the thing is that basically it's a matter of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, if the casters are able to get through and uh, I, I feel like the hunters are going to have a really, really good chance against them. It, it, you just look at, you have to look at the field of play when you try to yeah. figure out who's going to be able to take it, not just which classes are the strongest. Yep. I think mages have the overall field advantage. I think we're going to have a lot of mages get through and they're going to go up against hunters. And I've just heard that Bean has been able to take down that matchup time and time again yesterday in prep. I mean, like, if we see that happen, I really won't be surprised. I remember back in the day, it was always that, you know, mages would counter uh, or hunters would counter uh, mages very well and also warlocks to a bit of a lesser extent. Uh, they're extremely strong. Mages are very, very good at kiting, but you don't need to worry about getting kited whenever you can attack from ranged. And you're also doing physical damage that bypasses, you know, that obviously, you know, if you're fighting against somebody's cloth, you're doing a lot more damage overall. Somebody put uh, an exclamation mark bracket in the chat. So yeah. I got to execute the command for, for everybody coming in right now with the exclamation mark bracket. Here we go. You can take a look at, at our bracket. Anytime that you guys hit that exclamation mark bracket, we'll be sure to to make sure that you guys can uh, actually see that. Uh, we'll bring it up. Uh, we'll, we'll be executing all of the chat commands throughout the entirety uh, uh, of the show. Absolutely. And we're again, guys, uh, obviously everybody is waiting uh, patiently for things to be prepared and ready to go for the, uh, the first dueling. Uh, I, I actually match. think we might be about ready. We're, okay, we're, we might be about ready if you guys heard that. Listen, everybody knows I'm the god at dragging out content. We've already been live for like what, 30, 45 minutes? Yeah, Asman and, can watch a uh, and, an entire. He can watch a three-minute YouTube video in two hours. <laughs> hey, pause, champ. <laughs> that's right, literal god. He can watch a YouTube video of himself watching a YouTube video. <laughs> well, that's why you really get in to dig deep into the real specifics and the fundamentals of the conversation. And then also middle halfway through, you bring in an irrelevant personal anecdote that has nothing to do with the video or really anything else. And then you just start talking about that for another hour. Then you get back to the actual video and uh, you know, it's just a great thing. There it is, dude. I remember one time I was taking an algebra test. Like, yeah, exactly. wait, wait, how did we get here? <laughs> Got an F. We're Got, here right now. Got the load. <laughs> there it is, dude. Yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be getting this one we're revved up. And guys, if you are just tuning in, that first duel is of course going to be Benruki versus Dracova. And I don't even know where the first duel is going to be taking place. I think that's one of the things that we really put a, a big priority right. on right now. I don't know if you guys have heard of this guy. There's a dude named Troll God Z, I think, something like that. X. We're looking out for him, and we we have people around the world ready to summon bags filled with soul shards. We will get away from the man, hey, the hey, myth, Rich. the troll god Z. It's not an yep. issue. We, I got it taken care of. Okay, yes. great. We've just heard from uh, Esfan, also our, our our head of security as well, that uh, package has been secured. <laughs> we're, we're ready to go. Okay, right. uh, right, well, let's go ahead and transition. Uh, All righty, let's do it. So here's what we need. right okay good very good and go ahead and get rid of that okay uh so first up guys we have ven Ruki and dracova facing against each other uh if they could come over here it's a you can't mount in camera's time so it's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a thing yeah production pog i know i know right best of the standard here on this channel that's right asmund gold's channel uh okay Squad stream? Squad stream? No. Okay, so guys, this is what we need to have happen. Uh, where is Dracova? We're going to put a raid target on him. He will be a star. Target. Ven Ruki. And, oh, I can't put a target frame on his enemy. Okay, so we have Dracova versus Ven Ruki here in the first match. Um, we are going to come over here. Separate from everybody else, so we don't deal with AOE. Guys, if you're watching the tournament, please kind of watch from a little bit of distance so you guys don't get hit by stuff or nothing weird happens. So part of the reason why we chose Caverns of Time is we thought there were different places here where uh, you could take advantage of LOS, and it was a little bit more of like a uh, real PvP situation. 
uh, Burning Crusade, they, whenever they made the arenas, they made it with like different bridges and this and that. There's different things that they could do to uh, to basically use the environment to your advantage. So we wanted to make sure to do the same thing. Okay. So, Rich, Asmin. All right, here yeah. we go. Uh, we're starting things off with a bang, too. We're going to have Alliance versus the Horde. We got the reigning champion in Venruki of the past two dueling tournaments. The dude is a BlizzCon champion as well. Oh, my God, and he's hot as hell. Venruki's wow, ready to go. Tank top, man. He's ready. Okay, Guns let's out. Get this done. And then we have Dracova with a lot to prove. Obviously, you already heard from Esfan that this is a guy that he's known for a very long time. He believes in him. To, to be one of the best Rhett Paladins, to put the entire spec that has, uh, you know, it's it, been it has quite a heavy. To it's it has been a very, very big reputation. Hard and, to carry. Um, a lot of people are not necessarily coming into this with an expectation that it's going to do well. But listen, like we could be completely proven wrong here and I'm ready for it. Uh, Dr Dracova is essentially the biggest underdog that we could potentially Absolutely. have here. And it starts out with him playing against a literal god, a, a yep. man who has already proven himself, the guy who is out to just do it back to back to back. Somebody that, I, if he's able to win this, and then we go into the final tournament of the beta, and he's able to even maybe pull down the other one, if he's able to get the triple crown in the classic beta, you cannot tell me that he's not the best player playing. Absolutely. I mean, like, that's really all there comes down to it. I mean, like, if Enruki is able to pull this off, BlizzCon champion, dueling champion, commentator, classic dueling champion total chat commentator champion hairline champion pog champion screaming champion an all-around champion I, I, he honestly might just be one of the best humans to ever live and if your is able to take him down and start off with that i, I, I mean there it is dude yeah. there it is i'm ready for it I, the, the thing is though is imagine if Drakova takes him out there like <laughs> oh, the, like, like if Drakova is able to take Ooh. this first round tell me that you don't have the most potential momentum in the entire tournament uh, we did not know that they were going to be coming back to, hey. Hell yeah, brother. Howdy. You guys ready for the yeah. 4th of July? Uh, the, we are also, so one of the things that we're playing around with, and we're going to get it all locked down as we move forward today, we really wanted to try to make sure that we could get the actual player POVs yep. in, instead of just running around and, and spectating that way. So Dracova's figuring out everything right now. One of the requirements that we actually did make for our tournament was having all the players streaming. So if you guys want to check in any of their POVs, you can do that. They're going to have their streams open as well. So if you want to multi-tab, watch your favorite streamer, get some ideas of what it's actually like to be in the moment on your favorite class, or you're trying to figure out what class you want to play inside of the beta. Well, let's say, let's say you're that. playing the same class and you're playing a mage and you lose to everybody. Go watch Venruki and see what you're doing wrong. Like, that's all there is to it. So if for anybody, yeah, make sure to support these guys. They're all streaming and okay with this. So please go ahead and give them your support because this is an amazing event and it wouldn't be possible without everybody here's cooperation. And and also, I, I like, look at a guy like Noxa, you know? Like, this is a, this is somebody that's become our friend so far in the, uh, this is a guy who's good. <laughs> Dude. Esfan, Esfan yeah. looks like the guy I call when my computer breaks right now. Uh, did you turn it off and turn it back on again? Did you try is refreshing your, the stream? Is your router on? It's not a cup is holder. Your, it's not a cup holder. Is your internet plugged in? No, sir. The cords that are tangled do not make the internet slower. You don't have to untangle them to get more internet through. That's what I used to have to wear to school that's not when i played vanilla for the first time <laughs> that's not a monitor sir that's a printer <laughs> trust me dude i was doing computer repair back in high school it was a bad time dude let me tell you that i remember what i was saying earlier about irrelevant personal anecdotes so here's basically what happened is that we would have to go to different classrooms and fix random teachers computer problems and it was actually the biggest ego boost that i've ever had in my entire life because i realized that all of these people that i would have to look up to constantly were actually really dumb with computers yeah, yeah. this is the one thing that i had over them my, my biggest ego boost also came from a teacher but i i actually don't think i should tell that story on stream yeah i think you already did <clears throat> all right guys uh, i think we're about ready uh i think van Ruki and Dracova are ready uh the dueling rules that state that they have to be 20 yards away from each other um so this is about right whenever they start 
I will do a countdown so we don't have to deal with latency. So I will go three, two, one. I mean, obviously, Horde can't read what I'm saying, but I'll say three, two, one, and then I'll say go. It's kind of obvious. The fourth thing that I say is is the thing to do, right? So, are we ready? <laughs> Your mom, fat. <laughs> Wait, hey, calm down. Hey, relax. Unbelievable. Not yours. No, I'm just saying, we're trying to do a very serious dueling tournament here. Sorry, I'll take the hat off. This is very important, okay? Did I? Did... Okay. I'll put the hat back. Okay, ready? Three. <laughs> two. Okay, so Dracova's already moving in. Vinruki comes in, immediately sheeps Dracova. Vinruki's gonna be trying to get absolutely to max range and then start opening up on him right there. And here we go. He's right there at 36 yards. I think that's the max range. Starts dropping frost bolts on him. And then immediately Dracova comes out there and he's summoning in the entire menagerie. He's got battle chickens, mithril dragonlings coming at Vinruki super fast. Vinruki is actually going for killing all of those different mobs. Dracova goes ahead and uses freedom to go ahead and try to catch up with Vinruki, but it's not mattering because obviously Vinruki's moving at basically the exact same speed. Dracova pulls back with the pets, and now they're basically going to reset, and then Vinruki goes for another polymorph on Dracova to reset the match again. So this is something that we saw from Vinruki a whole bunch in the last tournament as well, really prioritizing anything that gets summoned, whether that is going to be an item or it is going to be a pet. And then he's just easy. You'd see him even taking a hand off the keyboard there, just making sure the nose is clean because he's digging for the win he's going to be able to get that space he uses that polymorph to his full advantage after dealing with anything that could be thrown at him by and dracova and he gets a drink dracova is going in here to make the make the difference here and then immediately Vinruki comes to polymorph dracova with only a second or two left dracova obviously gets out of that polymorph there's a number you see a fire blast go off two different uh frost bolts and dracova is just getting kited and then we see a repentance go off dracova goes for the heal Vinruki sitting there at 44 percent mana this is where dracova the rep paladin dream actually could come true we get an auto attack a full absorb dracova uses freedom tries to stay on Vinruki goes for the stun Vinruki blinks the stun dracova throws a grenade it hits Vinruki. Ooh, big grenade there that's going to allow him to close that space as well let's see if this auto attack and he can get some auto attacks and, in he's going to be able to trade out of the poly but he instantly gets rooted yep he actually used this trinket right out of the polymorph he's using everything they can and Vinruki is going for another reset using a vocation right here and Dracova is sitting there at half mana. Benruki is resetting the fight again. Mages are amazing. So one thing that you definitely do want to note about that Evocate as well, based off of the way that the dual tournament does work, we're not going to see that Evocate for a little while. It has a very long cooldown. It's a three or a six minute cooldown. It's a very, very long period of time. And then Dracova is getting right up to Benruki here. He gets him right up against the edge. He gets a critical strike for 399. Benruki is running away. Oh my Dracova, goodness. oh wow, Benruki got a really lucky uh, Frostbite proc. And then Vinruki went for a, uh, uh, what was it, a first aid, and then Dracova interrupted with Repentance. He blocks it, and then he just keeps kiting him. Dracova is very, very low. Vinruki's using a fireball here. Dracova goes for the uh, the bubble, and he's starting to heal himself, and this is going to be another reset. Well, and you look force at, the trade. You, you basically, force the trade. exactly. And, and it's very smart by Vinruki there yep. to see the blood in the water and go, okay, I can trade out Ice Block yep. here, and now he gets back to the space game. He throws out yep. the poly, he moves away, and Dracova is going to be on his last leg here, already relatively depletified on if, mana, and he doesn't have the same reset potential now to actually be going If it doesn't go trades. right the first time, you polymorph them, and then you go to the second time. And then if it doesn't go right the second time, you do it again. And now we're at about the sixth or the seventh time. Dracova's already used all of his uh, his bubble here. And, uh, oh, he goes for the grenade. Is he going to hit? He hit Benruki, and then he goes for a holy light heal, heals himself up to full, is closing the distance, and then Benruki immediately, I believe, spell steals that blessing of freedom. I'm not 100% sure about that. Benruki again then that. throws the it, grenade it, it, on Dracova. Dracova is out of mana. He uses a, uh, what was that even there? Ne I think nice that was net. a netomatic yep. uh, engineering trinket. And then he's just making the gap there. He can go for the lay on hands if he needs to. He goes ahead and he gets repentant. He uses the lay on hands and he gets back on the Vinruki. Now at this point, Vinruki, all he needs to do is reset the fight one more time and it's going to be a win. This is right down to the wire. Cold snap, second block, no, not much mana going to be left. And that's why we're going to see this poly come out here. Expect Ven to create that space and potentially go for another drink. But look how calm and collected this guy is. He's it's been in so off. many of these dual tournaments. I mean, Both hands off the oh keyboard, no. Sindel for a nice oh drink. No. He's getting ready for the 4th of July. Oh no. Even and though he's then Canadian. You look at Dracova with the in 
combat during the duel a uh, trinket swap over to the mark of the chosen reward from maradon if he takes damage there's a chance for him to gain 25 of each different stat so he's going to be moving over towards venruki dracova has already used lay on hands he's already used bubble the only thing that he has left is blessing and protection and he can't really use that against the mage so this is basically all Vinruki has to do is repeat the same thing that he's done twice, and he's going to come out ahead. And then there's the grenade nice, that Nate. just narrowly interrupts. Oh, it doesn't interrupt the polymorph, and it allows Vinruki to just make a little bit more distance. Was that spell batching? We can't really say. Batching pod. And then, yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> there and then we have is. the frost bolts coming out. He hits him with three frost bolts. A, uh, oh, a repentance right there. That is a very, very good repent. One thing you can say about Dracova here is he's absolutely doing an amazing job with the repent. Dr Dr so here, here's the thing with everything that we've seen from Dracova so far. You can see that he's like I, I want to take this first game he's down to use absolutely everything if absolutely. you don't use it you lose it i love that from Dracova, and we could also see him going and working around the resets that venruki takes and he goes okay if you're going to reset i'm going to try to use that to my advantage i'll let you play your game there's not much i can do to stop you i'm, I'm one of the most difficult classes in the game to connect all i really have is my freedom to rely on and we've already seen how well venruki has moved around that so he is basically saying you take that drink go for it he's obviously in the poly there so he doesn't have much of a decision but this time he can finally close that space mm. he has a little bit more mana another poly is going to come out and now we're going to see those frost bolts also keep in mind then rookie's going to be ranking those spells a lot uh, sometimes he is just going to be prioritizing the slow so it can be a little bit more efficient with his mana and we won't actually see those big beefy frost bolts coming out now we're going to see a nade as well auto attack andy in full and swing he's going into it right there and then he goes for the net he does the iron grenade and he just narrowly hits ben rookie as he tries to run out Dracova heals himself, and Ruki is going in for another Frostbolt, and then he gets interrupted with a Repent. Dracova goes for the first aid, and he goes back on to Venruki. Holy shit, this is going on. Dracova is... He, he's holding his yeah, own. This it, is incredible. Esfan is actually was so right about what we've seen from This Dracova. is incredible. He's used the entire toolkit so well. And, and Venruki, I, I think when you look at, at the field of play right now, and you look at how, what mages are able to do, then right now is in a position, not only is he a deadly player, but I think he has the advantage as far as classes are concerned. And we can see that matched in the chat as well. A double resist. A double resist, yeah, and then finally he gets one off. Dracova goes ahead and he uses the uh, Blessing of Freedom, and then he's just trying to make distance over to Venruki. He goes for the stun. Venruki obviously blinks out of the stun, and Dracova goes the opposite direction, maybe trying to line of sight and reset again, and Venruki's sitting there. Dracova is obviously drinking. Venruki goes for the uh, Frostbolt right there, hits him for 300, hits him with the grenade. Very, very good grenade right there. Second Frostbolt. We're getting a third Frostbolt with the Fire Blast. He's going for the Iron Grenade. Is he going to hit him? He hit Venruki right there that could have been the end of the match but Dracova held it off and then Naruki goes for a rank one frostbolt I believe just to keep Dracova a little bit more slowed Dracova nice again rat. goes with the repentance with the into the first aid Dracova again staying alive by the skin on his teeth back up to full health and Ruki goes for the poly and then he's going to go back up to drink again and see if we can get this right the next time you, you can even see Van Ruki there like nod when that rep comes out is so yeah, well played and, and also Dracova really prioritizing trying to get some of that extra resist I can even I can hear Quinn right now in his red paladin screaming resist 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 yeah. Well, the thing is that it didn't even matter. Like, if he had resisted the uh, the the next two, that would have been really bad. But because he resisted the first two, it didn't break Polly. So it was actually a really good thing for that to happen to him. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. Venruki got lucky with those resists in a way, yeah. right? He used up all of his bad RNG there. And then again, Venruki's going for three frost bolts into the iron grenade, into the fourth frost bolt, probably into a fire blast. There's the fire blast right there. Uh, frostbite proc keeping Dracova stunned and then Dracova has his second bubble up and then he immediately goes for two heals and he's trying to get himself healed up as much as possible Venruki makes distance so obviously he can drink Dracova throws the grenade it hits Venruki Dracova again goes for another bandage and Venruki is again making distance so he can drink and reset again so Dracova is again out of outs that's basically something that we've said multiple times. This rep is going to be huge here. This is going to be that window of opportunity. It's almost at the point now for Dracova. He has to close it here. Oh He's going to be able to God. win 500 crit on Venruki. Dracova trinkets right out of it, the volley, and then Venruki gets another one on them, but this is only a short polymorph. It's only 10 seconds. Venruki goes for the first aid, making distance on Dracova, and then he sits down to drink. I don't know what's going to happen here. Are we going to go for another polymorph? We are, and then Dracova immediately tries to drink to get a couple of ticks off for that, and then Venruki goes back over there, polymorphs him again, gets in position, starts casting frost bolts again. Dracova goes the opposite direction to outrange the frost bolts and then drink for a third time. 
a fat whack from the Pally going to crack open this matchup, and all of a sudden, Dracova's very much back in it. It forces Van Ruki to once again go for a reset, and look at Dracova right now as well. You have to keep in mind, Van Ruki at this point is going to be getting close to an ice block again. So he does still potentially have those outs. Big grenade, though, once again, Dracova going to come through. Dracova We've already seen how devastating those hits can be. goes for the sheep. And, and I can actually see a bunch of you guys saying that, that yep. you would like to see Sheep maybe have a cooldown or something like that. Uh, you should try out BFA. Yeah, in, in BFA, we're going to see uh, Polly very different there, but not here. This is classic. No changes, baby. That's right. Sheep going to come out. Then Rookie going to move away. And now he's going to start casting some of those Frost Bolts. 143 damage going to come in onto him. That's going to be This could me. be the end of it. Uh, Dracova has no more outs. And then, oh, wait, he does. Oh, wow. Vinruki blocks the repent and Dracova goes in there to hit him There's right there. Dracova does a clutch furbolg form. I believe that's what it was. Very, very good there. Dracova goes for the heal. Vinruki interrupts it. Dracova, oh my god! Dracova resists the attack while he's doing in for first aid, so he keeps getting healed even more. Dracova's at 10% health. He goes for the heal. Is Vinruki gonna hit him? He didn't quite hit him in time. Oh my god, this is right down to it. Vinruki is basically trying to out damage Dracova's heals, and I'm pretty sure he's not gonna be able to. Oh. Rookie is out of mana. Yeah, yeah. He oomed himself, so he's running away from Dracova. The amount of spatial awareness that he has right here is absolutely incredible. So, so basically what happens in Rookie's mind, he says, I already used the block. The block is not something that's necessarily defensive for him there. It's an offensive yeah. block. He knows that he has the evocate, so he goes in and he says, I'm going to start a war of attrition because I have one more out. And basically what happens there is he goes completely oom, he goes for the race, and he doesn't quite win. So he needs to get back. He uses that evocate. Now he's out again, but he's ahead in the race one more time. He gets a full reset this is something that you would see sometimes in arena when you see the full resets actually starting from both sides now this rep is a desperation rep he knows that he needs to move back he knows that he needs to get himself healthy and he has no mana to work with here so Dracova going to move away he's going to start that first aid now then Ruki can close that space with a full bar of mana will he be able to close out this first duel in our tournament and you can already see half health for Dracova ben racing against the clock all in right now Ben Ruki is all in Ben Ruki blinks the stun right there even in Dracova Dracova has has almost no health left and Vinruki closes it out with the first match going to the mage what an absolutely incredible match and hats off hats off to uh Dracova I, I oh, love that wait, you, yeah, you, hats you, off. You, you can actually yeah you can hats, actually, off. hats <laughs> off to Dracova like that was so much more incredible than we had ever expected you, like the fact that Dracova held his own against Vinruki the previous BlizzCon champion dueling champion in the tips out tournament against Vinruki for over five minutes and, and you can see at the end there when he knows that he has the potential to close it out he goes in with those arcane explosions and that right? is what separates a good player from an incredible player you saw that he knew he mapped it out he knew what he needed to do and he did it yeah and, and you, you can't interact with that arcane explosion right yeah, so he's notice. basically saying I, I just need to get one off here i'm not going to allow any tricky stuff to come in i'm not going to get kicked on my school yep. i'm not and he also wants to get around another rep potentially coming out so very well played by ben Ruki there and i, I actually do want to say one thing uh so cross faction you could see nobody interfering during the duel at the end they decided to, to kill the players as a joke uh try not to do that because we want to keep the duels moving as quickly as possible and that messes around with the players yeah, and we, we actually are. need to send out reses so well uh well no no they have to die. Oh yeah. They have to die. Oh yeah. Yeah, because because it's tar target is hostile if you uh, try to actually duel yeah. them. Kill kill them then. No, 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 thank you. Thank right. you at the very end of the duel. It's thank you duel. very much for that. Sorry, I, I didn't even think about that. Down. Yeah, there there we go. And at the very end of nobody knows this except for me. I'm just saying it now. At the very end, I'm all, all of the gold that I have right now on the beta. Wait, can you give gold as a prize for a tournament? Sure. I'm not sure if you can. I don't see why you wouldn't. Be you know what? To... Yeah. I what, actually what have an idea. Gonna, what are they going to take We're going to take everybody gonna ban you from the beta. We're going to take. No, no, no. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take everybody to Gurubashi Arena. Everybody who's who's watching yep. and in the beta right now. We're going to go to Gurubashi at the very end of the tournament. Last man standing wins a storm mount. Uh, b b brought to you by me, Asmin, and and S Fan. Oh. G give a storm out. Uh, we're we're going to give that new, beautiful, bushy asparagus tail dragon. We all love it. We're all riding it in the game right now. And we want you to get in on the fun. We're going to give away that storm out at the very end of the tournament in the Gurubashi Arena. Last man standing. The ultimate prize. There it is, dude. That's fine. Let us know whenever the next match yeah, is ready, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting them set up right now. Actually, let's go ahead and move on over. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, guys. So uh, get a little bit more distance here. A little bit more distance, I guess, for uh, for 20 yards. Uh, and then, again, three, two, one, go. 
Okay, here we go. No, no, Second no, no, not, yet, not, yet, not, yet, not yet. Whenever I, whenever I call it. Whenever oh, I call okay, it. sorry. All right, now, now keep in mind, we actually did see with how long the first series did go. We're also best of three, by the way. So if Enrique is able yep. to take this one, he will take the first matchup against Strakova and move forward in our bracket. But with what we saw in that last matchup, both of these players got a lot of opportunity to actually use some cooldowns more than we expected in the duel. Fenriki had three ice blocks. He instantly used that cold snap in the first one, was able to get off the second one early on. And then the third one actually came out offensively. And now we're gonna start open this the duel with Polymorph. The only one that's not really gonna be available here is gonna be on lay on hands on Drakova's sure. side. So basically Vinruki goes and he does the exact same thing he was doing before. He makes max distance with Drakova, immediately gets a first resist. Drakova starts running towards him. Vinruki is gonna lose about maybe five yards of his kiting range that he would have had because of the first resist. And then Polymorph going away. Vinruki is obviously kiting Drakova even more. And Drakova gets right into that 20 yard range for the repent. And then he gets back up to full health and he keeps making his way towards Vinruki. Now, Vinruki is going to be able to get away. So, Jacoba is slightly out of auto attack range, but in range of obviously judgment and basically everything else the Red Paladin has access to. And then he's trying to slow Jacoba, trying to get Jacoba off him, goes for the fire blast here. Jacoba is obviously rooted there, and Jacoba probably interrupts him with a stun and then heals himself up back to full. Then Ruki goes for another Frostbolt. Barely Dracova gets out of it and hits him there. He hits him with a Frostbolt to follow that up. And then he goes in for the, uh, what is that, Blessing of Freedom. Ooh, Dracova charges net. at him with the net Omatic. Then Ruki responds by getting into a block and Dracova starts using first aid. And I actually want to say very quickly here, you're seeing how flexible both of these players are. Completely different styles coming out. Much more aggressive opener from Van Ruki, and also Dracova's able to take advantage of that. Both of these players top notch and Dracova has done. We knew that Van Ruki was going to look good. Dracova was one of those players that we were like, okay, what are we actually going to see from a Ret Paladin? This was a complete wild card. Yeah. Complete wild card and a complete pleasure to watch so far but Dracova once again going to be stuck in that sheep can you imagine 15 dollars a month to just be stuck in sheep all day I think long wizard should refund your sub time at 15 minute increments every single time that you're uh you're cc'd I, you I agree the game. i agree yeah absolutely it's the same as they used to give people free game time whenever the servers would be down and then obviously Vinruki is running away here Dracova is trying to meet the distance here with obviously oh wow look at that he just changing in the blessing of wisdom while Vinruki is obviously making max range to regen as much mana as possible goes for the second grenade immediately healing himself with flash away to maximize his amount of health and then Vinruki is still kiting away, but he is pretty close to the edge there. Vinruki might have to go away from him a different way. He's going to take a pretty good amount of damage here. This could be kind of bad for Vinruki. It, it could be. And remember the wild card that we actually did see from Jacoba when you talk That's about the right. wild card. That's going to be a very nice route that does come in. That Frost Nova going to slow him up. And then off of that, we're going to see Vinruki take full advantage. But the big thing that we saw from Jacoba is he does go for the reset. He has the potential to crit for over 500 damage. We saw a 552 Absolutely. hit come in last time from Jacoba. The reason that we call them auto attacking Andes is because of how much that can actually the auto do. Auto attacks do good damage. And then Vinruki is pretty low on mana here. Jacoba is just trying to uh, he's trying to just make the distance here. I don't know how this is going to go. He doesn't want to use bubble. Vinruki also doesn't want to use mana. He wants to try to force this bubble. That's why he was using that uh, that wand. But we'll see if that's going to be able to happen. He's only got seven percent mana. Maybe enough. Oh, that he doesn't think it's going to be enough. They're both going for a reset and they're going to try things again obviously Dracova probably pretty soon here Vinruki might go for the uh, sheep and there it is and then Vinruki is going to continue healing up obviously and he's got 15 seconds to do that yeah and and also keep in mind you can see Vinruki navigating with his wand a little bit there definitely very proficient with that wand but it's not going to be very important in this matchup because of the reset capabilities i think if you did watch the last tournament we saw a lot of wands getting crossed right you see, see the casters just shooting back and forth at each other having a nice wizard volley but when we have a, a mage in this particular scenario you can throw out the sheep you can get those novas you can get away you can get these drinks then Ruki going to know exactly how to use that Entering out of the polymorph, it's going to be greeted by Frost, slowing down Dracova. Ooh, now a nice this stun. This could close have, it out. This might have to be a block here. Is a bubble, I mean. Oh my god. And he immediately gets the repent off. Dracova heals basically up to full, closes the gap on Venruki, goes for those auto attacks, uses Blessing of Freedom, and he's doing a lot of damage here. Venruki, oh, he blinks away without even having to blink out of a stun. Uh, Dracova stuns him. Oh my god. 
Rukova stuns him with the block, and if he can close is... again, if he can get a rep off yeah, again, it, but this is going to be a big okay, evocate here. Goes for an evocate. Uh, and Drakova is actually going to decide to trade out with that evocate, and this is something we see in terms of Drakova. He says, "Okay, you're going to go for a reset. Me too. That's I right. will find time to close." Then Rookie's though not going to be able to get health. Drakova's going to be able to close. This blink Whoa. is absolutely massive that here. Blink Dracova... just barely came up. This is match point as well, right? Then Rookie can yep. close this one out, but you see Drakova say, "Okay, I'm going to trade as well. I'm going to be able to eat a little bit more of your damage." Now, once again, a conjure going to be able to come off. It's going to be nice for them, Rookie, a little bit later on. Drakova's still going to be sitting in that poly as Ben goes for that reset again. But Drakova played that very well, and he almost. Was able to take it down. You can see some follows coming in from Jacoba as well. I do want to mention if you want to be following Jacoba on stream, we definitely do implore you to do so because this guy has been playing out of his dome even when he's sitting in the shape. He looks fantastic in fleece, but we are going to see some nice frost bolts coming out as well. Is the stun going to connect? Oh, and resist. The, the, the grenade was resisted. If that wasn't resisted, I think Ben Ruki might have actually, and then he blocks to get out of the repent. He interrupts the oh my god, and then he gets oh man, he got hit by that grenade and Dracova still gets the heal off. Benruki is just looking for that window, and so is Dracova. Between trading resets and then going for those windows, this could be basically anyone's game, and we're just waiting for somebody to make a mistake or somebody else to get lucky. Dude, it's also... Dracova is going for the... He's going for it. He's almost out of mana. This I'm pretty is ballsy sure he's as hell. Right, he's getting ready to bubble. This There's is the no ballsiest thing that... I, this is the ballsiest thing is. that he's done this since is rolling there rat. Is right there. There's the bubble. I knew it. He bubbled right at the end to bait Benruki into casting that spell. Dracova is running away. He's immediately losing first aid, so he can obviously get more mana. Benruki is getting up to max range, getting his mana back up. Dracova notices that, and he immediately starts trying to reset too. So now Benruki has a window that he can obviously fight Dracova in where he cannot block. This is very, very much been Rookie's game to lose at this point. And I mean, it was pretty much been Rookie's game to lose throughout the entire, before the duel even started, right? You yep. can see how favored Mage is and Dracova just keeps saying, Hell no, I'm not going to lay down and just take it. And he's definitely put Ben Ruki on the ropes before. And we see him finding these opportunities. And he keeps creating these potential opportunities to win. And that's what you have to do if you're going to win a duel. And here's another one. He's going to be able to potentially close that space. But the Nova is just going to be too strong. Ben Ruki, once again, can get away for these resets. He can get out Polymorph. Now everybody in chat gets to take a nice little nap while Ben Ruki gets to take his 4th of July drink all the way in Canada. There it is. And I mean, honestly, he's doing this really, really well. Like, even I think that one thing that really, again, separates good players from great players is being able to adapt dynamically whenever things don't necessarily go exactly the way that you wanted them to go right so if you have a resist if you have something happen that's not supposed to happen if somebody you know something weird happens you have a big crit you know you change what you're doing based off of that and i think exactly. that's really something that we've seen Dracova do a lot and also Vinruki as well Vinruki, we're basically what i'm expecting to see right now is Vinruki to go all in at some point whenever he does get full mana he's obviously trying just to make distance with Dracova and then go all in for a kill because again Dracova does not have bubble he does not have lay on hands and these duels have taken a while but it hasn't been an hour so he has pretty much no other outs well it, it, it's a tough situation when you know you have a freedom it, it's one of the best things like if you if you've ever pvp'd in, in did you vanilla, see that he just fire warded the grenade that's, that's pretty bad. that was big <laughs> yeah. that, that was big it, you know when you when you do look though at pvp in classic wow yep. you think about things like warsaw and gulch metas were defined by paladins actually having that freedom but when you don't have backup to actually close the space you're just going to see then rookie time and time again use that blink and be able to keep himself nice and safe, but this is big for Dracova. He's going to and be able to finally the close repent, that. There's the Nova. He's going to be able to freedom out of it. And if we don't see a big proc here from Ben Ruki, he we could just see Dracova close. But once again, he is going to have another blank at his disposal. If this polymorph isn't resistant, then Ruki is going to be safe. Oh, that was close. This is listen, man. I I play a warrior. I know what this is like. Dracova. There's no way he's not mad right now. There's no way, man. This is. This is what mages do, and it's what they are best at. They are best at resetting, waiting for that opportunity, and that is all Vinruki is doing. He's going to go for the uh, the different cast. He had a resist there, obviously not good in his favor. Dracova goes for the grenade, hits the grenade, goes for the heal immediately. Vinruki blinks out of the grenade. Dracova immediately starts going for the channel on the uh, first aid. Dr oh, wow, Vinruki gets a crit for 600. Oh, this oh is my it. God, this Dracova is, is very low, and Vinruki gets him. Oh. There it is. 
There it is. There it is right there. there We're going to see Van Rookie manage to close it out. But Chakrova has been absolutely fantastic to watch. You can actually drop a follow for him. You can see everybody absolutely. resetting right now. A everybody on the beta teaming up together to make sure that we can reset the duel. Van Rookie going to be nice and happy there. Uh, he had plenty of time during that matchup, you know, to throw out the polys, reset, remind everyone that they can subscribe absolutely free using Twitch Prime by linking their Amazon account to their Twitch account every single month. You can do it right here uh, if you're watching on Asmund's channel sure. as well. And sure. We ultimately do see Ben Rookie just know exactly what to do in that matchup, but Dracova being one of the most malleable players that you could that, possibly That was incredible. Tournament. Like, honestly, Ben Rookie was by far the favored one. Let's go ahead and let's pull up the bracket here, and uh, we'll show you guys basically where we're at. First one right here, Ben Rookie and Dracova. Ben Rookie, two O's Dracova. Not to say anything bad about Dracova. What an incredible showing by a rep paladin. He used everything at his, at his disposal. He knew exactly what he was going to do. And honestly, that was that was incredibly impressive. Like I, I, I am incredibly impressed right here. You just want to use that one then? Uh well this is the loser's bracket. Uh, are we even doing loser bracket? I didn't even know if it was. Are we still uh, doing double limb, S5? Yeah, we're doing double limb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are we still doing that? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we know that. Uh, real quick, okay. I, I think we should go uh, for a little bit of an interview with uh, Mr. Van Rooke okay. here. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, uh, let, let's, go, let, let's go down to the actual battlefield. We're in the Caverns of Time right now. We have one of the most lovely, luscious, hair-flowing interviewers in the entire world to talk to the absolutely jacked vegan of Van Rooke. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? I mean... It this was this was a pretty uh this was a pretty impressive duel. I oh, oh you you ran away from me. You wanna you wanna go ahead and run back here? I'm, uh, I'm oh, pretty yeah. immobile. Uh, there you are. Okay. Right. So uh, real quick, I mean, what what did you think? What you, what were you expecting when we first fought Dracova? Uh, so Dracova is a paladin. I think I've I've dueled against him three or four times, mm -hmm. and every time I dueled him, like I, I thought he was obviously a really impressive player. He knows exactly how the matchup needs to be played. I think a lot of mages would probably end up losing to him, but um, obviously, you saw if you just kind of stall out the game and spam, eat, and drink till mana's in your favor, you can win. But I think he played it basically as well as you can. Yeah, I would. I would very much agree with that. Dracova is a very good player, and uh, I mean, of course, we we all know this, right? The level forty meta is a little bit different, wouldn't you say, than uh, than at max level? You know, not having cleanse and whatnot. But uh, I think he played that just about as well as you could have possibly played it, and uh, of course, so did you, right? So, uh, congratulations, great job on the win, and congratulations on going to the next round. Oh, thank you very much. I look forward to it. <laughs> I'm an attention seeker. <laughs> Me too. Look at what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm at, hey. I, I identify as that gnome. Yeah, uh, yeah but y you heard it from Ben Ruki himself. Uh, he knew what he needed to do in that matchup. He, he had so many tools to actually get away from what the Paladin can do, but we saw the threats. You know, we've heard Esfan talk about it. We saw if Ben Ruki made a mistake, I think that we could have seen a different outcome. Uh, that, that one crit very easily that just uh, and, and that, again there? like as i said like yeah the fact that ven Ruki, i mean hey he, he didn't ice block that was over 10 years ago he's improved since then he's gotten a lot better it's one and, BlizzCons, man yeah there it is i mean this guy he knows what to do and even though uh dracova got that really big crit ben Ruki was able to keep it in just keep the focus and make sure that he was able to just keep playing in the way that he should right and not not panicking, not choking at those at those moments. I think that's really what's that's why he's a BlizzCon champion. And, and also, Van Rookie did a, a very good job of kind of filling us in on what's going on in this tournament compared to the previous tournament. The first tournament that was run on the beta by Tips was a level 30 meta. Yep. Now in the level 40 meta, we are going to have different things that we need to think about. One more time, I do want to take a look at our bracket because we already mentioned that Van Rookie's moving on, but we haven't talked about what that next matchup's going to be. So as you can see, it's going to be a little payo over zero. Little payo the rogue versus zeroed the hunter. Now this is a bit of a uh, interesting matchup here. Now I don't know, guys. Uh, let, let's go ahead. Let's hear chat. What do you guys think? Hunter or rogue is going to come out ahead. I personally think we'll give him a second here. I personally think that all things considered, hunter. The only thing here is that I think a lot of people obviously have seen Payo play a lot more than Zero, so mm -hmm. they might know exactly what to expect. A lot of people are probably going to expect to see Payo come out ahead because they've seen him play. Zero is a newcomer in the same way that Dracova is, so could we see Zero do what Dracova didn't and come into the scene immediately 
and get a win over somebody who's already established, we could absolutely see that happen or not. And honestly, I think that's one of the most exciting things about this is we're seeing a match. I think Rogue versus Hunter is one of those things where generally, at least in my mind, right, is like a more of like not really a super hardcore player for like the classic meta, but generally as just a player, I think, you know, Hunter kind of counters Rogue in a lot of ways. And I'm really kind of curious to see how Peo is going to be able to adapt to that. And Peo, one thing you have to keep in mind with Peo is that he has been farming this beta. He has been playing this beta every single day. He wasn't spending any time on Nashtar or Mechagon or any of that other bullshit in 8.2. Hmm. He's been on this beta farming constantly. So we are going to see the best, most twinked out rogue that we can possibly imagine. Yeah. I'm really excited Let, Let's to see take that. a look. Who are the retail Andes? Uh, you know... Uh, well, I, we have a lot of people that are playing both, right? We have yeah. Benruki playing both. Uh, I think Sony might have been playing a little bit of both. Sidu uh, playing both. I believe Zico playing both. And uh, the other C guys. Not... actually plays the bo both at the same at the, time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I see him tabbing yeah, out yeah, in yeah, between yeah. arena queues. It's so funny. Uh, but but I really do feel like you know Je Jelly and Absturge as well. I know they were getting ready for the tournaments and things like that. Right. And also with the nature of how th this tournament was announced, the amount of leeway that people had to actually get, oh leeway doesn't exist. I shouldn't have brought that up. The amount of time that players actually had to get prepared for this tournament some of the players might not be fully twinked out. And it is Absolutely. important to, to think about Peo, who's completely dedicated himself to the band. One thing to keep in mind, though, as somebody who actually knows Zeroed, Zeroed has also been spending a lot of time on this beta too. So here we go. These are the two competitors. You're looking at Zeroed right there, the hunter, and Peo right directly in front of him. He is ready to go, and I am actually very jealous of Zeroed's hair. Okay. The fantastic hair, but Absolutely. I also do want to bring up, so far, we have always seen the player with no sleeves able to win in this tournament. That is a 100% chance. So so definitely so, th think about yeah, we'll that when that we actually mind. do watch a little Peo. Sure. And we'll put the bracket down there. And keep in mind, guys, we are going to be doing double Elim. Yep. Uh, once we do go to the, the loser side of the bracket, if you do lose and drop down, it is going to be a best of one. So you only have one dual one left. One shot, eight mile. That's all there is to it. But right now, Back it's going to be best wall. of three. Yeah, we're best of three as we do move forward the entirety of this winner side of the bracket for these first matchups. But Dracova, who looked fantastic against, against Van Ruki, even though he was the one to fall, he still does have one more shot in that loser's bracket to go on. He has chance of redemption. Yes, he does. Like a true paladin. And I'm actually really excited to see what he's going to be do, be able to do down in that loser's bracket because I, I genuinely want to see, I, I don't know about you guys, but I want to see Dracova play more. Yeah. I, I, I mean, want to see everything that he has to offer. But, I'm really excited. Like after seeing that, even though he lost, he is probably right now the main player that I want to see more of. I, I agree. But when you are down that loser's bracket, uh, sometimes you, you are going to ha ha have your knees weak, your palms sweaty. You only have that one shot and, and you really, you don't want to. Sometimes you just mom spaghetti. And, you know, you just mess up. That's all the way it goes. Yeah, so, okay, sometimes you get it, go. sometimes you get got. All right, we're going to see the big, beefy Torm boy, Sony Digital, getting ready. His duel, not yet. We're going to be paying attention to the lads of Peo and Zeroed. Already Zeroed is going to be coming in in a similar position to Dracova, uh, a player that we don't know quite as much about. You know, you can see it a lot in the chat. They maybe haven't gotten to see Zero played, but we've already talked about the fact that Hunters may just be one of the favored classes in our dueling tournament thus far. Okay. I actually am really curious to see what Hunters are going to be able to do. I think that we've seen a lot of different types of, uh, you know, mages in combat, but I really want to see what Hunters are able to do. I'm super excited about that. So hopefully, I mean, maybe that's going to happen. And uh, you're right. Actually, could we, uh, Rich, you're a little bit closer to the computer. Would you be able to update our uh, our prize pool on the title to $3,000 as courtesy by, again, the leader of the Hammer dude, Squad, our S boy S Tally? S already got it, dude. He's an a, a Wait, Oh, god. yeah, I forgot. He's, he's a, liter he's a literal is. god. And also, once again, I do want to give a big shout out to Tally. Uh, Absolutely. I actually got to play with Tally for like the first time on beta. You know, it's yeah. like that's one of the things that's been really cool when you talk about community in general not only are we able to do these tournaments but we've already seen in the beta what it's actually like to just all get to play together it's so fun and like I, that's one of the I, things yeah. that I, i'm really curious to see what's going to happen whenever actually classic comes out will all of the uh content creators all play on the same <laughs> server to simulate what happened on beta or is it going to be everybody kind of doing their own thing and uh it's going to be really exciting because obviously we are going to have those collaborations and i think those are going to be one of the main things that I, I think with the beta itself made it so much more exciting and fun is seeing all the different personalities and people playing together that you never would have had the opportunity to see before i think peo had to pee too 
So Lil Pei is taking a little pee right now, and then we're going to get the duel started um, when he does actually sit down. And if you guys do want to be checking in throughout the entirety of the tournament, one more quick reminder that I do want to bring up is the fact that you guys can actually slide into these players' DMs, essentially. You can slide into their chat, and you can get direct interaction with them and actually get to watch their, their POVs. Every single player in this tournament is going to be streaming. Uh, you, you can see Peo right now. He uh, says, can I can, go? Can I go? Yeah, and I like he's about to go. I think he already, right, went, to, already went to the, the, no, 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 the bathroom. I, I, think, uh, I, I think he's trying to go to the bathroom. Oh, he's trying to go to the bathroom. Peo, I saw the Gatorade bottle already, brother. Yeah, haven't you watched Mitch Jones? He's, he's probably agreeing with you right now. Uh, as you can see, too, dude, Peo is super oh, close oh, he's to back, he's back. back. Never mind, he's back, he's back. Yeah, he's back. He okay, already okay. peed. Okay, That's so big. Big plays. Big plays. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to see Peo start off this duel okay, right now. Boys. A lot of you guys favoring him. Oh, yeah, French-Canadian here. A lot of confusion can be coming out. Uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a big language already... barrier here right now. Okay, yeah. so anyway, 20 yards away. Uh, Peo, you can go ahead and start in stealth. Uh, so what we've said, guys, uh, again, for this tournament, this is our first tournament, right? And there's a lot of rules and stuff. It's a level 40 tournament, whatever. Um, one thing that we said is that the hunter can't use track hidden, but he can use flare. So this is, you know, everything's experimental a little bit. Anyway, Peo can go ahead and stealth. Uh, here, I can, I'll, I'll tell him that he's ready to go since uh, you don't speak the, the language. Uh, 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 je t'aime, Peo. Où le voulu chez où vais quoi? Je sois. What's that? I told him he can start the duel. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we're ready to go. Yeah, no you can see he's stealth right after I said what that. What the? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'll, t I'll teach you some things after oh, this thanks. tournament. I know a lot of Three. things. All right. How to get the hair back. Two. Yeah, One. I wish I did. All okay. right, here we go. So obviously, duel is starting. Zero is trying to find Peo, and Peo is just trying to find that opening to open up on Zero and actually get that attack. Zero drops a flare, and then immediately right after that is going to go ahead and use his Night Elf Racial to Shadow Meld. And now Peo is just kind of curious, doesn't really know exactly what's going on. So here. basically, what he's doing is he's staying in stealth so he can enjoy mm -hmm. his sub train. It's a it's a yeah. classic move that you see by Chad. Oh, by no! oh, and then Zero moves him in immediately, gets Peo out, and then immediately Peo interrupts him with a uh, a gouge and then zeroed stays on peo right here peo is doing a lot of damage to zero zeroed already at half health peo is oh my god stunned wait how did he full heal you could actually see as well there from peo he was saying wow what a good player that zero is yeah. he was saying it very loud he was very hyped up about what a good player that he is a big opener comes out from peo yeah, even though we see zero with with iron fantastic grenade and peo finishes out the duel you just can't stop. I mean, like, that was fucking insane. He just popped up. He he didn't even get the stealth. He didn't even get the open already. He still won him. He still eating him. And I actually do want to bring that up. Look this at is... that damage. <laughs> Look at that rogue damage, man. It's insane. <laughs> World of Roguecraft is real. I didn't think that it was going to be World of Roguecraft by 40. Right, that was one of the, it was one of the things that It is with Peo. He's been farming the beta every single day. He's, he's got icy chill and chin. Yeah, he's yeah. got the gut ripper. He's a god. The French Canadian rogue god, little Peo, coming out even though he didn't get the first stealth, still winning the duel handily by a very large margin. Obviously, Zero is probably going to use what he learned from that duel to maybe try and do a little bit better, maybe make a little bit more distance this time. And that's what I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. How Zero is going to try to close that distance and do a little bit better this time. Peo pooped in his mouth there. Like, yeah. to, to be sometimes completely honest, it, sometimes you get gone. And, and, but the thing is, too, as well, when somebody does take a, a giant dump in your mouth like that, it's hard to clear out the taste before the next game. That's right. And, it, it's very and easy and these to are, These are shotgun. Exactly. Like, we're not giving people time for cooldowns or anything like that. So if you use something in the first round, it might not be up for the second. So again, guys, we're probably going to be getting right in here for the second round, and hopefully... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully it's going to go a little bit different. And I want to we'll bring up happens. one thing that's different about our tournament than what we saw in Tip's tournament. Yeah. In, in Tip's tournament, there was basically a rule that said that stealth classes would get the opener guaranteed. Right. That stealth classes were allowed and, to have the opener. And this was a conversation that uh, Rich Esfond and I had. And we decided that in order to simulate more of a realistic experience, uh, sometimes you get the opener and sometimes you don't. And especially whenever you're encountering, because you have a lot of things in Classic WoW that increase your stealth. 
And then you have things that increase your stealth detection, like perception, for example, as a human racial. So obviously, if you allow people to just have the first opener in stealth, that does kind of negate some of the more finer points of the way that stealth works. But obviously, whenever we are having hypothetically two different stealth classes go up against each other, they will trade openers just for the sake of time and just common sense. And also, I, I the do want to... The third will be, if it's a tiebreaker, uh, the third will be free for all. Exactly. And I do want to touch on one thing. We, we can see all you guys in the chat talking about whether or not he got healed. We we will report on all of that when we know 100% for sure, right? W yes. Luckily, we, we have like an incredible team right now. And I'm also not, because... I'm not I'm, sure how he got healed. But I, it seemed like it was from an external source. I don't think you can heal people during duels. Uh, uh, th I mean, uh, regardless, he got, like, he still lost the duel. Like, who the hell cares, Spurgs? Like, it doesn't matter. Hey, well, yeah. don't call them yeah. that. We yeah. have a bunch of cuties in the chat. I'm talking about, gonna... I'm talking about you two. Like, I'm let's, sorry. let's, you just let's call me Relax. Unbelievable. Well, I challenge thing, you right? to a duel right now, S Fun. I, I, I have a, I have a I, good look, feeling. I'm at work. I have a good feeling that if he didn't get healed, he probably still would have lost. Let's not worry about it too much, gentlemen. We're All obviously right, back in game, setting up for the second map. <laughs> okay. Let's get this done. Three. Two. Hell underscore. KO goes into stealth. Three, two, one, go comes out from Esfan. That was the amount of time that it took Peo to win the last duel. Will we see him get another opener this strong again? We're going to see instantly Zero trying to oh, go for that big no. trap play. Oh, no. Zero immediately is able to get Peo out of stealth. Zero traps him and gets at max range. He starts dropping all the damage. Peo needs to meet the distance, and I don't know if this is even going to happen. Peo goes for the invis. Zero goes for the flare, and he gets Peo out with the flare. What a play. Peo closes the gap with, obviously, the... Uh, what is Peo's damage? Havoc, and he's just dropping damage here. Oh, my God. And we had a little bit of interference, but that's okay. Let's go ahead, and we'll do another match after that. Peo, make your bed. Hey, yeah. we, we actually get to see just how little little Peo is, but we're just Sometimes, trading. Here's the thing with rogues: is whenever there's one of them, there's usually two. Trust me, dude. Trust me. <laughs> like it's one of the worst things. You think that you're getting in a one v one with a rogue? You never one v one a rogue. You at least one v two, and sometimes one v four a rogue with a druid, maybe also in stealth at the same. Uga. Uga Uga. Yeah, yeah. Can now, we, can what we, we actually just saw. Oh, as fun? Yes. Yeah, we, we just need to get a res on Peo and let's let, we'll, we'll redo the match. Oh, yeah, we're just going to do it again. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, like, to, to be honest here, I mean, I, I believe that, like, so if we had that match carry itself out naturally, uh, Peo basically had everything go wrong there. Let's talk about what happened, obviously. So Peo uh, did not get the first opener, Peo uh, got trapped. Peo had, I believe, his stun resisted with a grenade. I'm not entirely sure about that. But then on top of that, Peo was also able to uh, get knocked out of uh, his vanish by the flare that Zero put there preemptively, expecting Peo to run through it. Mm -hmm. So Peo did basically everything wrong, everything wrong there, and I still believe that we probably would have seen him come out ahead. Yeah, it, it, it's just one of those situations where... I, I think that we're going to see insane damage yeah. from Pale. I, I, I'm already just blown away by the amount of raw damage that he's been able to output. And I think he's going to be a huge threat moving forward in this yeah. tournament. But like we already saw a Paladin play so well against Venruki and those big crits that came in, you know, that 500 plus damage area. But his damage never looked like the explosive capability that we saw from Pale. And also, you're seeing somebody with a higher armor proficiency as well. It's being torn into. So, what's Peo going to be able to do as he He's moves be able forward to in do whatever world? he wants? Yeah. Honestly, like I, I think at this point, I mean, after seeing all the amount of things that Peo was able to do at that uh, at that round, I mean, well, let, let's again, uh, wait, guys, chat, can, chat's bringing yeah. up an idea that I actually don't fully understand, what, and I think mauled? you might know something about this. What does uh, what does mauled mean? M A L D. I, I actually don't know what it means. Sometimes chat, they're just a few light years ahead of us. I learned a lot from chat, and especially your chat. You got a two hundred IQ chat here. So, Asmin, I, I feel like you might know uh, for no particular reason what mauled means. Could you explain to anybody who's just coming in for the first time? Welcome, welcome to the stream. What what is mauled? So you understand mad? Yes, yes. You understand ball? Uh huh. Mauled. Oh, so like if you got mad, you'd be mauled. Yes. 
Okay, I, I understand. Thank yeah, you so yeah, much, yeah. chat, for, uh, for teaching yeah, us all, a whole bunch here. And we're, we're not only learning from the chat right now, we're also yeah. learning from our first round of play here in the tournament because we have players in matchups that we're seeing for the first time in a dueling tournament environment at level 40. And Peo has shown us the explosive potential from Rogues. Uh, we've already seen now from Zero as well some of the potential to basically get in the middle of the opener of a stealth class. I think I expect now for hunters to still be really strong against a lot of the caster classes. Absolutely. But I feel like they're going to actually get chewed up. I, what do you I think did. about the warrior matchup? I, I, so imagine our, that's like a hypothetical. Like if there is a warrior versus a fill in the blank, I think the fill in the blank is going to win. Dude, like, wait, like we need to go. Sorry. Like there's uh, we, we, we got a little bit of a, uh, I mean, this is just taking too long, right? If we, if we have to do this every time. Uh, whenever you're ready, man. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're good to go. Peo is, uh... Yeah, can we get some hearts in the chat for Peo? Obviously, you know, it, it always sucks whenever you have interference like that happen, but the truth is that, you know, he's just doing an amazing job, and uh, I, I'm really, really impressed, honestly, with uh, how he was able to, uh, to recover from, you know, all of those things going wrong in that second duel. Basically, this is like a, war, a rogue's worst nightmare, and he still came out ahead. Uh, I, I'm very impressed by that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as, as they say in French, sometimes you just need to be super chouette. And, and, and Peo is definitely doing that. It's like sweating because he has a tank top? N not quite. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's, uh, but this could actually prove the rule. The it, tank top rule. I, I think the tank top prophecy yeah, you, may, may come true. Uh, but yeah, su super chouette is uh, French for like pog champ. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, yes. So, all right. So uh, when, when Peo's playing, instead of saying Pog Champ, uh, say Super Sweat Champ. I'm going to be I, I'm honest. I, I want to see more more games with Peo because I really want to see. I mean, he's taken his character to the absolute maximum potential, and I want to see what that potential really is at level 40. I mean, the damage that he was able to do zeroed, even with interference, was absolutely fucking insane. It did. He's, like, uh, I mean, he's it, pumping it, it up. It, it's ridiculous. Like how, and, and at this point, right, seeing Peo do so much damage in so such a quick period of time. I mean, could we see an actual, uh, I don't know, a, a shakeup at the at the end of the game? Like, I mean, at, at the end of the tournament, this is crazy. Yeah, I, it really is just a fantastic yeah. scenario to be in. And um, I, I think that one of the main things that we're making sure is just that we have uh, maximum control over this next one to make yeah, sure. Yeah, we're, we're, nice we're just doing our best. Yeah. I, obviously, you know, with the cross realm tournament, there are certain uh, complications that occur, and we're trying to start as soon as we can. Uh, we're doing our best, and uh, I mean that, that's really all all we can do. And so hopefully it's going to happen very quickly. Uh, S Fund again. Can we also get a lot of hearts in the chat for our executive producer, S Fund TV? Please give him a follow. He has done more work than any of us to make this tournament a reality, and the amount of effort that he's put into this is absolutely incredible. Uh, so yeah, you know, shout out to I, I've I've heard of Vanilla Brain in the past, yeah, but actually seeing how massive. The frontal lobes of S Fund are like getting this ready. I've been staying here for a couple days now and just seeing how he set up all of this stuff. Uh, I, I, I really like S Fund is uh, fantastic and uh, we can't thank him enough. And we're excited to get to do more and more with him. He has a very, uh, what, what's the opposite of smooth? Rough. He has a very rough brain. It yeah. just so so much surface area on that brain, so many thoughts, and he he was able to really set up uh, all of those things. Actually, get himself in Azeroth to be able to do these interviews, and uh, can't thank you enough, Esfan. And uh, definitely, if you, you want to support his stream, you, you can definitely follow him on Esfan TV. But also, if you want to help him find the woman of his dreams, follow him on Instagram. That that goes for 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 all of us here. Very you, very true. Uh, you follow following us on Instagram. I know Asmund's already good, but uh, me and Esfan could definitely use our queens. So if you want right. to follow us on Instagram, it, it definitely does help. Uh, the ladies really do like that number. So guys, again, we're looking like we're getting into position for the uh, the redo of the second duel, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, again. I mean, after the first duel, I really think this is Peo's, uh, I mean, this is his match to lose, let's be honest. And uh, as soon as we can get into here, I'm pretty sure that uh, as long as Peo can get the opener on zeroed, I'm really curious to see how that's actually going to happen. I mean, is Peo really just going to just delete zeroed if, if he gets the opener? I'm, I'm really curious about that. Too. I, I also do want to draw a little bit of attention here as this is getting started. Yeah. You can see in Esfan's bags right now, he's got plenty of fap and... Uh, you're not allowed to fap during this tournament. No faps allowed at all. 
Uh, as fun, you're not allowed to fap either. When you're getting this stuff ready, we're going to have to reserve fapping for after the tournament. You can see those free action potions right now in his bag. Yeah, there they are. Uh, none of that. None of that. Cut it out. No fapping. No fapping today, boys. But hopefully we're going to get into this match as soon as possible, and we'll <laughs> see how this is going to go. I mean, I'm actually really, really curious to see, uh, again, like the fact that a rogue is able to just do that much damage right at the beginning is absolutely ridiculous like i i never expected to see that uh one way or another and i mean let's see how do we have any other rogues in the uh the tournament here i'm just thinking uh, about it here uh let's see who's that hot form uh i think this might actually be the only rogue yeah this is actually the only rogue in here and he he could go on an absolute tear keep in mind when we actually if if peo does take this he plays against venruki Oh, which would be a crazy matchup to actually have in second round. Hey, wow, we're we're ready to start. By the way, we're okay. Well, uh, yeah, we're you, can, you can you start. Yeah, you can yeah, start yeah, as quick as you want. I was, I was waiting for you guys. Okay, three. Yeah, so Espan oh, was wait, actually waiting. waiting for us? Yeah, Espan yeah, was I'm, waiting I'm, for. I'm so for, sorry. He he yeah. was waiting for. Okay, he's waiting ahead, for Asmin right. because Asmin loves talking. So guys, I do. It, if you spam threes, we can get this started. Um. Just threes in chat. We're three, ready to go. Two, three, one. Three. Here we go. We're going to actually see who's going to be able to take the opener this time as we get the duel underway. Already we saw the Peo could have these explosive, explosive starts to the game. Where is the Hunter? Wake it up there. Zeroed. Going to be laying down that flare, trying to prevent the opener. And this is something he's done so fantastically well. We haven't seen Peo actually get and those then ideas. Peo goes right in with the grenade and he immediately opens up on Zero. Oh, he's dropping the bombs my. on him, getting those crits. Zero is down to half health. This is going in. Oh my God, Zero's trying to make range. He's trying to make some distance. Let's see if Zero's gonna be able to get over to him. Uh, let's see if that's gonna happen. I'm not really Dude. sure if it will or not. Let's see, okay. We, 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 had, like... we had a little bit of interference coming yep. in there from external okay. forces. One so... of the things that we are going to have to deal with with a cross-faction tournament, we're going to have to employ- Sometimes we have some bad boys, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, we, we got some bad boys. Uh, can we just can we just do this one right over again? That way it won't take them that long to get back to their body. Yeah. Yeah, and also so, the other thing that we uh the other thing that we can do as well is start to use some of our warlocks we knew that there was some and, potential and again, for this guys don't worry about this we can drag this out and also i actually i actually have this one friend and he's actually working on a little bit of a project it's a list of names and uh we're watching and uh i'm gonna call soda popping on you uh enjoy oh, classic oh, dude oh, yeah enjoy oh, classic oh, <laughs> enjoy classic that was real funny okay. yeah I, I hope yeah i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed those few minutes of uh ha having fun because i'm gonna call soda popping uh literally right now L literally right you now did this to yourself Enjoy the blacklist, brother. Yeah, so so if uh, here's the thing, like you guys know who they are, horde, like just kill them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anybody that interferes, just immediately kill on sight. Kill anybody that reses them or anything like that. <clears throat> very very simple. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go again, guys. Oh, okay, great. We're gonna get right back into it. Thank God. Okay, let's make this happen. Hey guys, if you ever fall off the horse, you get right back on. Never stop, right. always going. Big dick. I was going to say super sweat because we have a French Canadian true. competing. And speaking of that, what an explosive, literally, opener by Peo. Immediately jumps in there and drops the bomb on Zero, literally opens up at the crits, takes Zero down to half health. All right, let's see if he's able to get another big opener again. We're getting this one ready as quickly as possible. Okay, here we go. S Fund is doing the countdown. Let's make this happen. Peo is in stealth. Zero drops down the flare. Peo is deciding what he's going to do. Let's see what's going to happen here. All right, already in stealth. Pulling out some spells from his spell book there. Complete okay. confidence. He knows that he should be he on top of the He goes in for the iron grenade. He drops it right there. And then Zero was spamming. Oh, my God. Spamming Scattershot. Good traded with the explosion. And then he... Oh, my God. Was that a... Was that a parry or a dodge or some sort of an you evade on that gouge? And then obviously trap. Zero... Yeah, beautiful fucking trap. And then Ao is obviously <clears throat> making distance there. And now we're going to see that Netomatic come out as well. It's going to buy a little bit more time. Peo is going to be able to drop combat there. And we do have a, a Night Elf on our hands as well. So that is something to keep in mind for Zero. It will buy him a little bit of time. And Zero is going to be able to create that space, create that damage. Will he be able to kite Peo Ooh. Ooh. all the way to the Shadow Realm? 
Oh, I think this is I think this is going to be a kite. I mean, this is not good for Peo at all. Zero is going to be able to make max range on him. And unless Peo is able to do something here, it looks like it is going to be over for Peo. And that is one to one tying it up. Peo is obviously not in a good spot right now. A huge disappointment. That's sometimes just guys. That's sometimes just the way it goes. And honestly, I. I I think Zero played that really, really well. And I think that's a very good example, as you guys saw, saw right there, of spell batching. Zero getting that, that scatter shot off at the exact same time that Peo used that grenade was something. And then also on top of that, Peo not getting that gouge off, I believe, and Zero being able to get that trap, not good at all. We, we could also see that Zero just basically had that plan. And he said, I'm going to stand in my flare. Peo's yeah. opened every single time with that that grenade, yep. trying to get that stun. So yeah, what does he, he do? Going to he just goes right in for that scatter shot. And, and that's obviously something like. And I do want to. I do want to say this, guys. Obviously, Zero knew that because Peo did that on the second match that was interfered with. If the second match was not interfered with, Zero would not have known that, and the second match might have gone differently. Yeah. This is just the facts and the realities of doing a tournament like this on a PvP server. Yeah. There's nothing that we can do about this. We're doing our absolute best to make this as fair and uh, I don't I don't know, like ethical as possible. It's one of those but things where we, we wanted to try to push it and have the cross faction tournament at, at, at all means uh, possible. And uh, we're definitely very excited to have players from both Alliance and Horde. As the tournament does progress, though, we are we can enable different zones. We're also going to have yep. situations where we're going to have Horde versus hey. Horde and Alliance versus Alliance. So we can do a bunch of different things moving forward. Yes. And now we're hearing from Espan right now. So, so here's the issue with that last duel. Uh, I believe it was another hunter who uh, who flared Peo while he was in stealth off the reinitiation whenever Zero was guiding him away. Okay, we'll just have the other hunters and everybody be a little bit farther away in flare range, and that way we can see it. And then everybody else just keep track of where the hunters are. If we see somebody do the flare, immediately kill them. Uh, if Did that actually happen? That, that's, that's fun. That's, You're sure about that? That's what I thought happened, and, and uh, I got confirmation on it. Okay, well, we'll wait for confirmation on that. And if there was interference in that way, very, very obviously, mm -hmm. we are going to restart the duel, and that one yep. will not count because of interference. Yep, yep. And I, I think that one of the things is too, with everybody who is in this tournament, like these are top caliber guys, we know that yep. they're they're going to be completely open with us and, and let yeah. us know what did happen. And it's also, I mean, it's all being recorded. It's not like, oh, wow, he's going to lie about it, and then yeah. a thousand people aren't going to be able to just immediately check the VOD. Yep. yep. So... Uh, I mean, it's not uh, the the only thing. What's up, S1? So uh, is Pale ready? I, I, I'm, I'm trying to see if uh, Pale's good to go. Uh, it seems like he's yeah, ready. So he looks ready to me. Get the start. Okay, let's do this. Pale, ready to go here. Already with one win in his back pocket. Going to try to close this one out here. He's been uh, one of the guys throughout the entire beta who. Not only has been entertaining to watch, but has also brought a fantastic level of skill. We're going to see Zero once again try to get himself in the position to be in that flare, take full advantage of being a Night Elf, and try to prevent the absolute onslaught that Peo can do with a successful opener. Peo so most likely going to go for the grenade around. again. He's expecting to see Zero right on top, but then Zero immediately counters his grenade with a scatter shot, leading that up into a trap, and Zero goes ahead and gets at max range now. What's going to happen? Zero already at probably 36 to 40 yard range, charging up an aim shot. Peo is moving towards him. He hits him, and then let's see how this is going to go. Oh, Peo hits him with a, a blind. Okay. Th th this could be the restart that he needs. Now, one of the big things is when you do look at the potential for the scatter shot, yep. it, it's such a Ooh, huge a play by Hunter. Right there. There's a, a trap reset? right there. And then immediately Zero hits Peo with a bomb to hopefully uh, make the gap here. Let's see if that's going to happen or not. Peo should. Oh, there's a trap trap again so zero is going to be able to reset and i don't think peo has used uh he hasn't used vanish so i'm pretty sure he might he has a lot of tools at oh his and zero goes for another shadow mill that makes it very interesting peo immediately tries to go after him zero hits him with a concussive start sites concussive shot starts kiting him i don't know how this is going to go peo is getting right over to him if peo makes it over to zero this match is completely over and you can see peo is going yeah, to be one behind thing to watch for his dual range. he is he's running out of dual range right now He's okay, trying to kite as far as possible. Peo going to be able to close that space. Will we see that explosive damage that's come out from him before? Zero is oh. still going to be relatively oh, healthy. And then there's a stun, and then Peo is going to be able to close it out, and then he does right there. 
Oh my god, there's a trap. Zeroed. He feigned death the last hit. Zeroed is going to make distance again. Peo gets out of the trap right there. He goes to maybe kill. He gouges the pet, so then Zeroed has to actually attack him right there. He throws another grenade at Peo. The grenade hits Peo. Peo is at very, very low health. Zero is at also lower health. Let's see what's going to happen. If Peo here. connects this, to Zeroed, he wins, this right? This is it. This is really, really right down to the wire here. And then, oh, oh, Peo. oh, oh my oh. God. That is almost 400. The pet's going to get he the kills done. the pet. He's at 36 oh. health. What's going to happen <laughs> here? Shooting. And then Zeroed finishes him off that was right down to it so you could actually see peo there he tries to heal himself wow. up for a second and he decides that he's just going to trade shots with the hunter and there, there there's an idea that basically comes up you got to play to win not play to not lose very easily peo could have tried to run away there but he only had 36 health eventually a hunter's going to be able he's to get that shot it. in he's so, gonna auto so, so like, what he decides to do is he goes for a low percentage play with trying to trade those blows he basically, but it's the he, highest he, percentage play well he throws this up right yeah he's like here you go if it hits him in the eye you might get that win well that's actually kind of what happened it just fell off the table and did nothing so unfortunately uh you know that play doesn't always work trust me i've used that a lot against mages in desperation and the outcome is uh very similar yeah and and i do think that it's also one of those ideas where we saw moving so far out of dual range this is one of the reasons that we actually did pick caverns of time yeah. to start off a lot of these duels because it is very realistic to a lot of those pvp situations it's very <clears throat> curvy you know yeah yes. you, and, and we see a lot of those classes definitely like in those curves tucking into little corners starting to play away and, and we see the hunter go pretty much to the limits of, of that dueling zone and Peo needs to actually run there. And once yep. again, these traps have just been so huge coming out from zero. I am just absolutely amazed. Like the, the fact that he was able to trade that scatter shot and everything was something that I was very, very impressed with. Usually that does not happen in that way. And I think that that is kind of an outcome of spell batching. Is that something that things usually that things usually go with? And yeah, I think the chat might have died. I'm not really 100% sure. Something looks yeah, like it's on I, Twitch. I think I think Twitch is a uh, Twitch is a little messed up right now, but uh, we should be ready to go here. Uh, oh great, they're following suit. Um, okay, I, I can pull up chat on my phone. No, I, it's a, the Twitch is, is broken. Not, hey, not there broken. is uh, so so with the issue of dual range, right? Uh, I think when dual range hits and uh, if people if people are running out of range too far, then then we need to we need to call it because it's uh otherwise you could theoretically just like kite someone for like a million years so we, we we are we we do like it's at our discretion like if we want to call something so all this stuff is stated in the rules so people should know yep 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 we're, we're going to be very good boys. Right. We're going to make sure that well, we do we're follow going those into this rules. This third round, this is the tiebreaker. Payo won the first one, zeroed won the second, and now we're getting right in here into the third. All tied up. Let's see who is able to take this. Whoever does actually take this goes up against Fen Ruki. Whoever does lose going to drop down to our losers bracket to play in a best of one to keep their tournament dreams alive. You can already see too some of the other players getting ready. Healing stack gonna be one of them. He's gonna be representing Priest. But when we look at these two players, there aren't many hunters and there aren't many rogues in this tournament. So if you are fans of either of these classes, these are kind this of the guys the they have to look rogue. to. This guy is I mean this is the the champion of all rogues right here. It's Peo and uh, Zeroed. I think we have another hunter or two in the oh, dueling form, tournament. Hot form is a rogue as well. Uh, hot form is oh, going to be playing oh, as rogue. Okay, okay, great. I'm here. Obviously, uh, hey, you know, Zeroed is doing this for a little bit of motivation, making no, sure look, that he's he, completely ready He streams ready like to you go. stream. Yeah, basically, exactly. Yeah. Uh, true, by the way. Yeah. We, then, yeah. Here we go. We need to go. Uh, Zeroed is like, come on, dude. Zeroed needs to. Is, does he have the stream open? He needs to at least get in position. Let's go, boys. Zero, stop watching Let's YouTube go, videos. Who do you think you are? Stay safe. Yeah, what is this? Let's Bosh go. champ, dude. Let's go. What, what is this? You're watching an Anixia montage. What, what is going yeah, on here? Yeah, a quick little, uh, <laughs> a little bit of variety in there. Let's keep things exciting. Variety streamer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we we are going to okay. take a look here. He is tabbed back into World of Warcraft. He is in position. And also, guys, if we do get in a situation where people are milking the clock just a little bit too long, we will enforce the rules and actually call it a forfeit. If yep. we do see that it's happening for malicious intent or anything like that. We're ready. We're prepared for your shenanigans. Okay. All right. That's fun. It's on you. <clears throat> Three. Two. 
One, go. Okay, here we go. Let's see. So obviously, again, zeroed going for the uh, the tried and true strategy of dropping a uh, flare and then immediately going into uh, shadow meld. And now Peo is just sitting here waiting. He's deciding if he's going to go ahead and drop a grenade or not. Peo goes in with the grenade, and he actually hits zeroed with the grenade this time. And then zeroed immediately goes in there. He does a, uh, a scatter shot into a feign death, into a trap, and then zeroed goes right back out into range, doing the same thing that he did before. And so here we go. Zero is getting ready, charging up his aim shot, getting ready to kite Peo as much as possible. Peo has sprint. He's trying to close the distance. And let's see, what is this here? Looks like we had somebody else interfere. And uh, let's see how this is going to go. All right, Peo, try to close the distance. Let's see how this is going to go. And ultimately, Peo is going to be torn to shreds there. Peck going to be able to do so yep. much damage. Peo, a little bit tilted, and I, we can see why, right? I like, can see why. The, the, let's res Peo. Let's try. Let's just get right back into this. Do it again. Do it again. Uh, whoever that guy was that was interfering, just make sure that we keep killing him immediately. Keep his name in mind and uh, make sure that you guys are sharing that and uh, kill him as soon as he respawns and uh, just infinitely uh, after that. Uh, we're going to try to get this third round down. Now, obviously, uh, we were able to do two of them already, and the third one is going to be no problem as well. It's just going to take us a little bit more time. And again, guys, I do really apologize for these delays, but this is, of course, the uh, unpleasant side effect of playing on a PvP server is these things can happen. So uh, I think also one thing that I do want to keep in mind here and one thing that I do want to give a huge shout out to is everybody who's been able to participate and spectate this tournament and be completely unintrusive and actually just be able to enjoy this thing that we're all doing together. So thank you to everybody who's been a part of this. It's yeah. been absolutely amazing. And thank also like we're really, we're learning some of the best ways to actually protect against some of this stuff because yeah, we want to do it in the future. And we're going to make sure that that happens and we expect over time to figure out better ways to, to deal with the trolls and, and make sure that they can't interfere. And uh, already, we've seen great games coming out from Peo and Zero, and I, I, I'm really excited. Can you to... kick that clown out of the guild, Esfon? Uh, I don't think they're in the guild. Good. <laughs> no way they okay, uh, right. we're, we should be ready to go. Okay, let's get it done. I think we broke Twitch chat as well. Good. Yeah, I think we broke Twitch chat. That, that means that we're doing a good thing. Yeah, we're, we're doing it live. Uh, so yeah, obviously, uh, I, I guess people aren't able to spam uh, well, W true. But uh, right now, if I was in the chat, I'd, I'd, I'd be spamming. Ay, yeah, yeah. OK, all right, here we go. Let's do it. OK, so obviously, uh, Zero drops the, uh, what do you call Ooh, OK, here we go. Uh, Zero drops the flare. And uh, let's see, he's going to go obviously right into stealth. And then we're waiting on Peo to do the opener. Let's see how this is going to go. Peo is sitting there. He's waiting there. We don't know what's going to happen. He's deciding what's going to happen. He's sitting there biding his time. I don't know what this is going to be, boys. I think he might be thinking about doing a chicken. Let's see. So there we go. He goes in there. <gasps> oh, he doesn't get the scatter shot. The and then he gets a scatter shot out there immediately. Peo has the chicken out there. He's opening up on him. Are we gonna get? Are we gonna get the trap off or not? Let's see. Oh, Zero does get the trap, and Peo again. Zero's already got. Or sorry, Peo already has Zero down to like what sixty percent health or something like that. That's obviously not very good. So here we go. Peo's obviously trying to do a little bit of damage to the pet as he's working his way over towards Zero. And oh wow, Peo's going for the. He's going for the long strat. So he's actually going to kill the pet. He's killing the pet. Peo's not even half health. The pet is already dead. Now Zero is in a very very awkward position, and Peo goes for the full heal. This could be really bad. It doesn't. It, this really all depends right now if Peo Zero can it. stay in combat right, or not. I, I Peo is obviously it. going in the opposite direction, so he can leave combat. So Zero can't make a make distance to him. But this the uh, small little like whatever the the bird thing here is keeping him in combat, and uh, he's not able to go into uh, stealth here or not. And then let's see what's going to happen here. He goes for I think the distract, and then Zero is eating up right here. And then Peo just needs to get right over to him. But Zero did an amazing job taking advantage of that heal. I, I think the big thing to note, though, is Peo should be able to get another opener here. I actually I think he is going to be able to I think that he might it. be able to. He's yeah. already going. He's he's dashing over to him right now. And oh, then Zero is probably going to go for the trap right there. He goes for the trap and a second reset. This is not good for Peo because Peo just used his stealth to get over there. And Zero is using his trap time here to heal up and reset. Now, obviously, Peo is going the opposite direction. He's going to stealth, try to get back into stealth to reset the fight. If Peo gets the reset, it's over. But obviously, he wasn't able to. Zero tries to move in a little bit more and then Peo is just running away right now he's getting pretty low health this is not looking good for Peo at all zero is at full health and I think Peo is let's see 23 health 42 damage 
Yeah, and it looks like Twitch is back working at least on our end right now, so you guys can spam in the chat one more time. But I, I think one of the big things that does happen there is constant traps. Even without having that pet for additional harassment, for additional poke, once you see traps come out like that, Peo's not going to be able to reconnect. He's not going to be able to have those strong openers. And we can also see the power of spell batching. This is like one of the big things when we were actually talking about what was going to happen with Classic, whether or not we were going to see functionality like that being in the game and we saw so many different people fighting for it you can see the power of that with these scatter shots a lot of the time in multiple of these duels oh yeah spell batching is obviously a huge factor here and uh again i think pale really did an amazing job like let's keep in mind that despite all of the interference it obviously is tilting like anybody mm -hmm. to say that that's not going to piss you off like if you're sitting there in front of thousands of people and you've got some dick sucker that tries to attack you during the match of course that's going to make you mad and peo did play through that he did an amazing job he kept his cool the entire way through obviously hunter versus rogue is an extremely difficult matchup for him absolutely favored towards zeroed so i don't want to hear any negativity about zeroed at all he did an amazing job and honestly it's something that we could have pretty much expected to happen i am going to fine you though for for cursing uh as a big decal for me but Aye. there it is that's the way it goes oh, excuse all right me let's get our all right yep. bracket here oh whoops one, two. The zero moves on to the next bracket. Here we go. Against Van Ruki. But we're going to keep on moving oh, here. Oh, boy. Next okay. one going to be Hot Form versus Healing Stat. All right, we're actually boys. going to see another rogue instantly, and it's going to be against the first priest that we're going to be watching in our dueling I'm tournament. I'm very curious to know how this priest is going to do. Well, this I, is also, I, it's also Healing Stat, right? He's he's the uh, host in the yep. Arena World Championship. He also is somebody who's been up on the BlizzCon stage before Absolutely. on his, on his Druid. He was healing uh, and, you know, second place against one of the longest reigning teams that just back to back BlizzCon victories. He's a very good player. He's good. Uh, and let's see, who's he going up against? Hot form. Hot form. On the road. Okay. All right. So we'll see if Hot form is going to be able to, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, guys, what do you guys think? Priest I versus Rogue. What do you think? I I'm personally... I feel like this is going to favor the uh, the rogue. Uh, there are so there are different ways that you can spec. I, I actually talked to Savix a bunch uh, mm -hmm. to this a whole about two Savix about this a whole bunch back when it was the level thirty meta. Yeah. And he was actually talking about like some of the different ways that he saw people spec. And one of the guys who was actually specking different was Peo, right? Mm -hmm. Like Peo uh, at the time was going for some different things to actually tech against melee. Yeah. Uh, it, but when you are looking at the rogue, they can go for a lot of different things that can just tear apart Clothy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And also, I believe, like, you know, like his inner fire stacks are probably going to run out mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, this is so long ago, I hardly remember, but I believe you can't re refresh inner fire unless you're out of combat. So this is going to make things extremely interesting right here. And uh, also, yeah, that puts Peo against Dracova in the loser's bracket, too, which is going to make things very, very interesting right there, too. And on, on top of that, I think this is going to be one of the big matchups when we actually do see Hot Form versus Healing Stat, yeah. where we're going to be able to talk to these guys and we're going to start start to figure out some of the things in the meta. I, I definitely do want to take an opportunity when we have a chance to talk to Healing Stat and actually get his kind of idea of the field of play. We talked to Ven Ruki yeah. before, and Ven Ruki really did tell us how he's going to be looking for resets on the mage. Right. I want to hear what a priest likes to do, because when we were in the 30 meta, priest and druid were two of those specs where it's yes. like, hey, you run and you rot. It, it, you, you create that yep. space the, the best way possible. I, I mean, even when we were dueling against each other in that meta, right? Yeah, like, like, I know. So I, I was playing Druid, and we would I, I would just try to create that space. I would try to root you. I would just get you dotted up, and I would just run away and travel for him with a couple of hots on myself, and over time, you would lose. And we're not going to necessarily yes. see Druids this time around, but Priests are the other class that do that specialization or that play style very well. They're going to be able to rely on their big mana tanks, and they're just going to put up a couple of those dots. They're going to run away, and they're going to keep themselves healthy. I, I think that's basically what's going to happen. I mean, like, you're going to see probably, like, maybe, a, you know, maybe one reset or so. But I think Priest versus Rogue is going to be a pretty, uh, pretty expedient match. And uh, how are we doing on the match? Hey, That's fun. Uh, pretty good. One thing I want to establish here, uh, just so people know, from now on, this is going to be the tournament or the the dual range. It's the back of this tower. Mm -hmm. It's the back of this tower, uh, all the way to the end of uh, that guy over there, that that broken half tower over there. So that is that is the dual range, and we're gonna tower to tower. 
Yeah, tower to tower, basically, and we're going to start the duels right here. Okay. Right in the middle. That That is the duel range. Because uh, okay. I, mean, I think there's some issues with dual range and stuff there. And I, I mean, obviously snipers and stuff, like we can't really control that. But one thing we can control is uh, making sure people are staying in dual range. And I think other than kind of judging it, eyeballing it, and saying, this is our dual range, everybody knows that's the best way to do it. Sounds great. All right, we're ready whenever you are. Yeah. So uh, hot form and uh, healing stat, if you guys can come here. Yeah. Uh, right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's a little bit fluky, but it should be working right now. Yeah, the first the first thing I see in chat when I refresh the chat refresh the chat is you degenerate incels. Hi, Thank nice you. to see you. Yeah, that, that's that's us. Smiley face. We're ready. Okay. All right. I'm excited to see what healing stack can do. You yeah, know, this uh, is going to be really. Uh, there are curious. two. There are two priests that I've really been paying attention to, like throughout the the beta and, and watching a lot. It's been healing stat and it's been Kala. Like these are two of the guys that have been playing a lot of priest, and we, we've seen just what they can do. I think priest is one of the classes that I look at and I go, I expect it to be really good when it actually does get. To yes. 60 but i didn't i don't really expect it that much from it at mm -hmm. 40 and this is going to be the real test here where we can see what it can do be careful that's our bracket we don't have that we well, don't i don't want to destroy the stone wall behind us mm -hmm. i mean that would be absolutely terrible for it to be destroyed by very this. trusty shield there yeah i mean the crest of water on obviously it didn't do a very good job of protecting it though so maybe it's okay. not as hard as we we're want. starting okay let's do it let's get this started Good. 20 yards <clears throat> what does uh what does how's mad mean h o e how's mad how's mad yeah h o e it's not how mad are how's, you oh how's mad okay how, like how's mad are you i'm learning i'm okay, learning three. so much from from chat okay let's do it learned a bunch from chat now it's time to learn a bunch from healing stat what are we actually going to see from a priest in this tournament how will he fare against the rogue instantly he's going to make sure that he is set up with that bubble he's going to have the maximum amount of protection that he can to fight against the opener from the rogue will we actually see hot form have that beautiful opener and be able to take down healing stat instantly and we can actually look at some of these povs right now and There's now everything's healing stat sitting right there he's just waiting for that rogue to pop up he's got his shield on he's got his inner fire on he's got all of his buffs and he is ready to go waiting for that rogue to pop off on him and uh let's see how this is going to go the rogue opens up with a sap he's waiting to get back into sheep and then he saps him again what's going on here i'm a little bit confused but we'll see what happened oh he's waiting for his energy to regen and here we go he goes back into stealth and he opens up with garrow hemorrhage and then he's got crippling poison on him he immediately fears healing stat tries to fear he trinkets out of the fear and then immediately stuns him with a blackout proc into a grenade healing stat oh mind controls him Big to reset MC. the match oh my goodness and look at there how tanky go. healing stat is as well like healing stat was so tanky he just like took that opener on the chin oh and was totally God. fine with it. Now he's going to be able to reset the matchup. Will we see Hot Form be able to find stealth again? Uh -oh. And what we basically, I don't think we are going to see uh, combat is going to be is, dropped. You don't get Cloak of Shadows until Burning Crusade. He's right and at max he, range. This is not good at all. Hot Form is going towards him right here. Let's see if it's going to happen. Healing Stat is making some damage. Hot Form immediately goes for the blind. He's waiting for Devouring Blade to come off. He's obviously deciding, okay, is it going to be enough time or not? Obviously, it's not. He's going to probably try and wait for one tick and then go back into stealth and go for a sap and then go for a, ooh, I don't know about this. This is going to be uh, interrupted right there. He's and taking he his time. To a he, drink. He, hey. he, you know, he's taking hey. his time. He might actually hey. just be waiting for, for Cloak of Shadows shadows to actually come out now he's finally gonna get the opener okay, but adrian's gonna retaliate with the fear and there's the whelpling as well okay. it's gonna be moving in Ooh, how much will we be able to do not get rid of whelpling, but you can kill it it's already dead and then he's moving all the way over to healing side right now healing side is at half mana healing side is running away making distance on him with the dots up and then he hot form tries to run away and then healing set hits him with the grenade as he goes away healing set doing as much damage as possible hot form at 20 percent health healing set has complete control over this match hot form is running out for some sort of a self some sort of a reset something he's right against here the wall. and he's Immediately going in there, he tried to shadow meld into a drink. Obviously, the damage is going to break the shadow meld. Healing Stat knew that was going to happen. He waited, and then he reapplied Devouring, or sorry, uh, Shadow Word Pain, and he stunned him with a blackout proc. 
This is not looking good for hot form at all. Th this is when you put the gotchis oh, in the chat because no. Adrian is just having the beefiest amount of damage oh right now. And look how much mana he still has. He still has a thousand He's mana. He's going for the wand. Oh. He's going for the wand. Easy. Easy Woo. win for Adrian. That, that, there it is, boys. I, I do also want to just know he had so much. This is when you actually do expect the priest to be pet playing for that attrition what mark. a play but he's what, what a play what a play with that mind control absolutely fucking incredible that was something that we was absolutely nice but i i thought the rogue was gonna win 100 adrian turns around healing set turns around and just completely dominates that match and that's again something somebody that knows their class at the fundamental level i, it, like, I mean I, I, some, I somebody who understands wow. the game at a fundamental level like I, I i've had the pleasure of playing with healing stat and so many different versions of the game and yeah. he's the type of player i remember i was actually running mythic plus with him and yeah. he like just rolled a mage and i watched him just like shatter combo stuff he's, in like these he, incredible ways and i was like wait he, you've been playing mage for like an he's hour. good at the game he's just good and, and that's something that like i mean we say that everybody in this tournament is good at the game, right yeah. uh it's not like i'm competing or something but the fact is the, the fact is that some people really have certain opportunities to show that off and i think that previous match that we just saw was absolutely healing stat showing what he can do with his class so we have one win for healing stat if he gets another one he goes into the next round i, I also do want to just bring up something that you know we, we obviously put this bracket together on the spot yeah how did it end up that we have a canadian in every single round thus far uh, just a big mistake it's just canada versus the world right now i guess so Will Canada be able to win? Uh, well, as far as I know, I don't think Canada's ever lost a war. We'll see what happens. Canada, Canada yeah. always coming out on top. Yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. Okay, here hey, we go. Uh, yeah, what? we're going to go ahead and start. Okay, we're starting game number two of this best of three series of healing studs able to look as dominant as he did in the first game. He is going okay. to march on forward and he was able to just shut down pretty much all of the damage that Hotform was even able to put out in the opener. And now Hotform is one of those players that also has been just so focused on everything. Oh, he opens in the up with a cheap shot, a cheap shot, cheap shot, a cheap shot instead of a, a Garrot, and then immediately healing stat fears him out of that resetting basically the entire opener and i think that we're getting a little bit of deja vu healing stat at max range and then he's trying to get away here hot form doesn't know if he should try to reset or not and healing stat has got the dots on him hot form is slowly ticking down he gets the devouring plague and then he just barely i don't think he got that stealth damage off or not and here we go Dude, Adrian is just looking oh, nasty no, right man. now. He is looking nasty. Now we're going to watch a short video of Peo. And, and so the thing is here is that sometimes not only do we have uh, stream snipers, but we also have clip snipers. So, uh, you know, that's the way that it goes. But obviously getting back right here into the match. And obviously we didn't miss much because we already saw before in the first game, Hotform is running out into max range to hopefully reset. Shadow Ward Pain already has, what, 10 seconds left on it. There's no way he's going to be able to reset before he's dangerously low on health. Healing stat, however, is very dangerous to go on mana. So this is going to be very curious. But he did reapply Shadow Word Pain. And I think that we might see a Devouring Plague come up pretty soon here. And that could be the end of the match. We also saw a wand close it last time. And this oh, is this Adrian. Is this so is this is this is what that we call absolutely calculated. This is a really nice attempt, though, here for Hot Form to oh, actually be able to reset. Uh, and we're going to wow. be able to see the sap come out as well. So Hot Form definitely going wow. to be towing the line here. But what we see Healing Stat do, the reason he is so okay. low on mana, he's able to calculate calculate the fact that he puts out so much pressure that he can potentially get this quick kill against the rogue and just shut down all of the things that he does have at his disposal play to the advantage of not having any of these big resets now hot four he's able to get a little bit of a heal oh, but a big resist gonna come in he, he's still into into that that invisibility though he is still stealth so he still will have that opener that is big for hot form he's gonna be able to get that sap onto healing step but look at what healing step was able to get he was able to get more mana than hot form was able to get health he's gonna get oh, right out with that fear miss. now the shield's gonna be up healing that should be able to close it out here oh man that's what you like to call rng and sometimes that's what god so that's what i like to call some thick wand damage and hey, we're going to be able to see adrian close that's the it way out. it goes i mean honestly like that is something completely not expected i thought this was going to be a complete opposite but we had a total reversal an amazing play by obviously healing set and also let's get some hearts in a chat for hot form he did an amazing job there tried his best tried to reset and he did everything that he could and sometimes 
Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And so I actually, right if, if possible, as fun, I would love to hear from Healing Stat as yeah. well and actually hear what his take is on the meta, what he thinks priests are going to be able to do, and if he expected to come out on top of that matchup because he will be moving forward. And no matter what happens, uh, Svan, definitely ask him what he thinks about the Warrior matchup because he will be actually going against a warrior no matter what because sony versus noxa are going to be going head-to-head -head in that next round we're going to have oh, a true. mirror matchup to start that's things true. off so it looks like healing stats going to be going in the semifinals. Yo. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, yeah there we go there we wow. go and, and also on top of that we are going to see the fact that hot form is not out of it yet we are doing a double right. elim tournament so he is going to drop here and also can we get a huge shout out by the way again more hearts in the chat for s fund we got that match set up we got all three of those games done bing bang boom thank you so much s fund amazing fucking job his and vanilla so brain is evolving that's right yeah of course of course and you know of course another amazing job that i'm about to do is uh interview uh mr healing stat here oh he's running around uh, i lost him healing oh, stat, sorry, can you come sorry. back oh we uh, lost I, him for a I, second okay. i don't know how that happened so, so, Mr. Healing Stat, um, what was you, where, where are you at? Did I lose you? I'm here. Hello. Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. There you are. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> uh, it's like almost like I can only see in one direction. Uh, yeah. So, Healing Stat, how, how did you feel about that matchup, Priest versus Rogue? Um, so actually in the level 30 dual tournament, I was defeated by Peo, who was playing Rogue, of course. Um, and so I was really scared. Sorry, they can't, and actually... they can't hear you. Can you get a little closer to the mic, a little bit to your left, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Over here? Is that better? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, right. that's good. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, like, as an undead, my throat is a bit coarse, so it, that's why I talk a little bit low. Mm. But um, the the Rogue vs. Priest <laughs> matchup was a little bit tough for me, so that's why I, I actually built my entire build around this one matchup, so I'm a little bit concerned uh, going forward because I'm not set up, for example, against mages right. or shamans later on. But uh, against Rogue, I felt pretty confident and... Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty one-sided, okay. I think. So you, so you went with the strategy of put all your eggs in one basket early on, and then whatever happens, happens later down the road. Yeah, I'm kind of winging it. Okay, we're we're getting ambushed here, so <laughs> we, we better we better get moving. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Aswand.